Okay, doing a stream today. Let me... I actually don't want to record this one. I will just let it stream. So, I was going to do one last uh, last night, but ended up having some things come up that I had to get to. So, um, I guess I'll, I have a free day kind of in the, at the, in the morning today. Of course, everyone's at work in America. So, you know, all you wages... No, no wages allowed in the stream. But I guess it's ideal for people in India or something like that. I don't know. So let me pull up the chat. I will read donations as usual over there, wherever they are. I think I pinned the comment with them. Um, and I'll talk about whatever else. Uh, let me pull this stuff up. Let me pull this up, because I didn't actually... The, the reason it took me so long to start this thing, I will say, is because I, I branched out. I'm actually using two computers now, or at least I'm trying to use two computers. Because I, I usually use my laptop for everything when I do streams. You know, just it's, it's difficult dealing with multiple computers, you know? Um, but I decided to bust out the old desktop. Theoretically, I do have two computers. I never use the desktop, but uh, it is now streaming, and I'm using the laptop for everything else. So, uh, I think I actually got a couple messages. I'll go ahead and read them. Uh, Ryan sends in 10 bucks and says, Any recommendations on books on agriculture? I want to know the stuff like nitrogen, pH, pruning, and crop rotation. Doesn't have to be the Bible, but something to point me in the right direction. I will say I have, um, I actually did a blog post years ago, back when I was uh, about to move here. Where did I, where are those books? Um, where I have, a, a bu I basically ask the same thing of people. And, uh, where, okay, where, they're right in front of, okay, here they are. Right, so, um, good books to check out. There's this guy named John Seymour. Okay, uh, so he has a series of books, or just different ones. I have two of them: the self-sufficient gardener, and uh, self, uh, the complete book of self-sufficiency. Also, a good thing has gardening, has other stuff as well. Has you know how to, I don't know, prepare animals and you know uh, compost and stuff like that. I don't know how to make things, how to can things, all this kind of stuff. So I recommend these books. Uh, they they've been pretty good resources. Like they're not too. They're not too autistic if you're looking for something scientific-y, which you also don't really need that. Um, so I would recommend these. Uh, there are a couple, I want to say I might have like another book of his. Oh yeah, and another one that people, rec uh, I got recommended to me a couple times is Illustrated Guide to Gardening. And this is actually from Reader's Digest. It's a little more colorful. Or actually, no, maybe it's not colorful. Maybe it's black and white, but it does have a lot of images. Okay, some of them are colorful do have color, but, um, so this is actually, so for example, we're actually talking about pruning here and stuff like that. Um, really the thing with pruning, I will say the thing I've realized about that is you got to feel like you're actually killing the plant. <laughs> you, you have to, yeah, because most stuff, you know, let's say grapes or figs or stuff like, like a lot of fruits, they will only grow fruits on new growth. So you have to cut back basically everything every year. Like every year you have to, you know, totally annihilate stuff. So, you know, the hard thing when you start out, if you don't know anything about it, you, you kind of feel like, oh man, like I'm cutting off too much, but that ain't the case. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, those are the one, books that I would recommend, or at least that I have. Like, there are probably many other good ones, but John Seymour in particular, he wrote a bunch of stuff and uh, it's pretty good. So, um, that's what I would say. So Anonymous sends in some Monero. Uh, oh, I did do a video. So the Monero donation portal, which is right, I'm actually pointing to it this time, which you can go to. I did do a video on that that's on PeerTube, but I'm going to release it on YouTube in a bit. Like there are a bunch of, for those of you who only watch me on YouTube, <laughs> there are lots of videos. I mean, you, my workflow for making videos is I will make them, then I'll put them up on PeerTube, which is videos.lukesmith.xyz, right? You can get to the link on my website if you're too lazy to type that in. But um, I will usually put up videos there, and then a couple days later I'll put them up on YouTube if I remember. And a lot of videos I literally just forget. Um, I mean, maybe some of them are too based and red-pilled for YouTube, but like in general, I, I just forget the, that I upload videos there and, you know, I, I just get sidetracked. I, I, like, putting things up on YouTube is less important to me now, even though, you know, I have a much bigger audience on it or whatever, but... Um, so yeah, but uh, Anonymous sends in some Monero. He says, thoughts on Lieberboot and Coreboot in the current year? I have not looked into Lieberboot or Coreboot in a long time. Um, obviously, I recommend everyone use a free BIOS. For people who don't know what that is, maybe, maybe I should red pill, you, red pill you on Lieberboot and Coreboot. What's the point? So every single computer nowadays, okay, ba basically every single computer has 
uh, you know, the Intel management engine, like if you have an Intel processor or if you have an AMD, like it, it, it doesn't matter what it is, like all major processing companies basically have microcomputers in the processors that can be exploited by companies or governments and all this kind of stuff. Basically, even if you're running Linux and all free software, you have a backdoor in your computer that can potentially be exploited. That's what the Intel management engine is. And of course, it's running, you know, non-free software anyway, right? So, uh, Libreboot and Coreboot and that kind of stuff, uh, ooh, am, I, ooh, am I buffering? I might be buffering. Um, the goal of Libreboot is to basically just have a free BIOS, replace all of that with all free software that doesn't spy on you and stuff like that. So when I first started my YouTube channel, I did do, um, I had this other ThinkPad, which I've since, I may have broken, like I had an X60 that I installed Libreboot on. And that's like, in, in terms of security, that is superior because, you know, you don't have this theoretical backdoor um, that the government can, can, you know, spy. Basically, if you can exploit it, I think you can look at stuff that's in the memory and other things like that of your computer, which could be basically anything. So, um... That is something worrisome. So Libreboot is a good idea. Now Coreboot is, Libreboot is like the GNU, it, it's like all free software and it gets rid of all proprietary stuff. Uh, Coreboot is kind of like middle of the road or more middle of the road, like it's free software. It doesn't fully disable the management engine because it's actually really difficult to do. Well, it like disables it, it doesn't remove it or something weird like that. Um, like it, it destroys its internet connectivity or something, but it doesn't like, uh, delete all the software because the computer wouldn't be able to boot without it. Because these Intel CPUs, they don't just have a back door. You have to have the back door in order to even start the computer, right? So anyway, old Intel Core 2 Duos, like core processors, they can be Libre booted. Anything that's like an i3, i5, i7 maybe, some of those can be core booted, okay? Some computers have core boots for them. Um, but that's another reason why, you know, think like a lot of the Libreboot development is done for ThinkPads. Now, of course, ThinkPads are, you know, basically the best, uh, uh, or at least older ones. You know, they're they're the most consistent brand of used computers if you want to get one. Um, so Libreboot development actually happens a lot for that. But then, you know, there's all this other stuff that happened. And I, I want to say uh, the guy who did uh, Libreboot now has this other project that's like, OS boot or something like I, I forget exactly what it is, but I have not kept up with it in a long time. Um, I, I kind of that really just because you know I got a core booted machine and I don't really think about it as much. There are other people who will actually show you how to core boot stuff um, or Libre boot it, uh, but it usually requires hard like opening your computer up, uh, attaching a microcomputer, and you know running some stuff, running some scary looking stuff. So, uh, but yeah, it is recommended. Like there are companies that core boot computers and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know anything about, if there's anything recent that's happened with the Libre boot, I have no, I have no clue. Um, so, uh, Marcio, since in $5, hi Luke, you influ your influence was really transformative in my life. May God be with you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Marcio. I think that's, he's usually a super chatter, I think, but he, uh, sent in a, uh, donation on my site. Um, Dan, Dan means something. Um, he says, uh, Luke, don't you see the inconsistencies in Orthodox theology? One small example, Western Christianity has no wall separating the altar because it symbolizes, uh, the curtain, uh, in the temple being ripped. Whereas Orthodox too. I mean, that's a very, <laughs> like the, the, the symbolism in the liturgy is, uh, I mean, if, if you're really complaining about innovations, like the West has innovated far more in terms of liturgical practices. Uh, you know, they don't even have, uh, the well, some Protestants and stuff will have both the bread and the wine. Uh, but you know, the, Part of the Council of Trent back uh, back in the day was the Catholics saying, "Oh well, you don't actually need both. You you can just have uh, you know the bread and not the wine and stuff like that." And I mean, th there are all these. I mean, that's not a theological inconsistency. That's a liturgical change, and the liturgical changes in the Western Church are are far more significant and really sacramental in nature. Like it's not it's not like oh well, there's this minor difference, you know, uh, or or of course the you know the Eastern Church in in uh, concert with the early church, still uses uses leavened bread, whereas the the Western Church doesn't. Um, so uh, Jithin says, uh, "Since in sixty nine cents, 
what do you think about natural law and the concept of objective morality? I like this version I came across of the seven, seven deadly sins based on objective morality and descending order of seriousness of the offense. Murder, assault, rape, theft, trespassing, extortion, and deceit. I mean, those are not, those are not the seven deadly sins. Those are just, I don't know, seven bad things. Um, I mean, natural law, like, I'm okay with the idea of natural law. I think it's, like, I refer to it a lot because I think the concept, I mean, just right off the bat, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not, okay? There's a difference between things that are just, well, okay, let, let's talk about it in theological terms, right? You know, there are thing, there are certain actions that are bad because they're just bad. Like, the, the, it's the nature of the action or the, how the universe is constructed that they're just evil actions. You know, you can say that uh, unjustifiable, un unjustified murder is one of those. Whereas there are other actions that, uh, you know, might be bad by fiat or by, bad by convention, right? So in America, we drive on the right side of the road. If you drive on the left, that's bad. <laughs> like, that's illegal. Consumption of pork, right? That is not necessarily a natural law. You know, that, that's more like uh, some kind of divan divine mandate. Like, the, the, either way, you know, my view, like natural law, like I'm not necessarily, I don't want to say like I'm against the idea um, I definitely used to believe in it a whole lot. I mean, it, it, it was very influential on Western, on the Western church. Um, but the thing is, it does, it does kind of take rationalism a little too far. I think, um, you know, in most moral domains, like it's bad, like it really, like there are some commandments that you don't really want to think through whether they're natural law or not, because then you... Then you get to rationalizing at an individual basis whether, you know, you should follow this, that, or the other, you know. Um, and that's kind of what happened in, in, in the Western church and then, like, the Enlightenment and all this kind of stuff, right? So now we're in a place where, um, that, well, when you think about it, okay, you know, the whole issue with the Enlightenment, which, of course, began in the Middle Ages with the Roman church or whatever, you know, the, the, the big issue with the Enlightenment is that, it, um, it assumes that human reason is superior to the world around it, superior to reality, right? Like if there's, if there's a disjunct between reason, what I think is reasonable, and how things actually exist out there, maybe social conventions, it must be that the social conventions are wrong, right? I couldn't be wrong, right? I'm, I'm being reasonable. I'm being logical, rational, right? So that, that's the central fallacy, whereas... <laughs> Um, in reality, the opposite is the case, right? So when people looked at, I mean, to, to be specific, right, you know, let's say in linguistics, as an example, there's this idea that there are two different kinds of linguistics. You can either describe how language is, or you can prescribe what language, like what ways of saying things are good or bad, right? Same thing in economics, right? You know, there's, there's positive economics, which is just supposed to be descriptive, and then there's normative economics, which is supposed to be you making recommendations. So, you know, the big issue is that uh, what, what if you divide morality up in that way, like if, you, if you're saying things like, you know, what people nowadays tend to do is they forget the positive side. Like people are no longer looking at societies as if they're organisms that, uh, you know, that exist for a reason, like social convention exists for a reason. Instead, what people say is, oh, well, you know, I have no, I see no rational reasons why, there should be different social expectations for men and women. Therefore, they shouldn't exist. You know what I mean? Whereas, you know, before, before that period, before that period of overthinking natural law and scholasticism and all this kind of stuff, you know, people were content to, content to say, well, there are these social conventions that I might not rationally understand, but there's a sense in which, like, I, like my reason is not sufficient. Like, you know, I'm not superior to, um, you know, the, the tradition. You know what I mean? So, you know, that natural law is kind of a way of, it, you know, I'm not against it, but it does kind of sow the seeds of this kind of thinking, this kind of enlightenment thinking, right? I mean, if you want to boil down the enlightenment to just any one thing, it's basically that. It's, it's, it's taking reason and putting it above tradition, right? And of course, we can use reason to look at traditional practices. Um, however, it's a very slow process. And the one that it actually requires understanding why conventions exist, right? It, it's not this very lazy subjectivism that people have now or this kind of um, hyper liberalism that people have where it's just like, oh, this, this seems mean to me, so it must be bad, right? It's not, you know, you can't do something like that. Um, but yeah, those aren't, those aren't the seven deadly sins. Like you can, you can look them up what they are. 
Um, I would recite them here, but I'm sure I'd forget one or get one wrong and look like an idiot. Um, Ryan uh, sends in $5. Have you read Teeming with Microbes, Teeming with Nutrients, Teeming with Fungi? Great overview of the soil food web, which is the basis of regenerative pre-industrial agriculture. Also recommendations on Libra language, Libra language learning tools. Um, no, I haven't read that book. I mean, it's what seems interesting. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, have, I can't say I've read it. Um, I mean, when, when I grow stuff, I mean, I, I'm growing stuff this year. I'm trying to minimize, like, usage of... I'm, I'm trying to grow things in a naturalistic way. Naturalistic meaning sometimes somewhat lazy, right? You know, I'm, um, like, using very little fertilizer. Like, I'm trying to position things in certain amounts of shade so that I don't have to water them too much. I, I actually... I don't know. Like, I really, I really want to be in a position where fruits and stuff grow on my property as weeds, you know? Um, th there's this thing I've tried to plant for the past couple of years called Everglades tomatoes, and they're supposed to grow really well around where I live. They're supposed to, like, you know, just be really invasive, but I can't get them to, like, the, I don't know, like, the sun is too hot or something like that, uh, but, you know, they're supposed to be able to grow in the Everglades. I'm not even close to the Everglades, but, you know, that... They would be a lot hotter than here, but... Um, yeah, I haven't heard of that book, though. Recommendations on Libra language learning tools. Uh, just don't use don't use tools for learning language. That would be my recommendation. So it's a it's a great example of a domain where you shouldn't be using software to, to learn, frankly. Um, the language... Like, I probably haven't written that... I use... On my old website, I used to have some, write, some writings on this. Uh, but that was, like, years ago before I had, like, an internet presence... Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm very much against any of these language learning tools. I don't care if it's Duolingo or Rosetta Stone, like all those things, they're really just like goofy games that have like a language front end. Like they're not like learning a language is like a mental habit that you cannot fake. Like you can't, like, there's no way to learn it other than like using and thinking in and talking in the language that uh, like, that's my issue with all software. Can they help you, like, pound in vocabulary? Sure, right? But, like, nowhere near as, you know, useful as, uh, you know, real-life experience. You know, that that's that's kind of my view of it, at least. <clears throat> um, I, I mean, I've, I back in the day, I tried to use all this tape's work, is basically he guides people, and you included, through building up sentences, like, expressing yourself using the bare bones of language from the bottom up. And through the whole thing, you might learn only like 50 words or something. It's not many, but, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of how it is. Uh, let me, I was going to, I was going to say something. I forget what I was going to say. Um, uh, sorry, I had to pull something up. Okay. Um, sorry, give me a second. Ignore me for a second. I could have, uh, here it is. Okay. Um, I was going to say uh, something else about language. Um, ah, here it is. Okay. Uh, anyway, okay. Uh, I forget what I was going to say. Let me check for more messages. Uh, some XMR from um, Norbitech. Norbitech. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Um, God King and Fatherland. Screw liberals. Cheers from the Basque com uh, country. Thank you. <laughs> and then it... Agni Ibili, Luke. I don't know what that is. If it's something in Basque, I have no clue. I don't know a word in Basque. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, in terms of vocabulary, um, yeah, vocabulary, like, you can use note cards a million times, but it's not, it's not, uh, that's just not how the brain memorizes things, you know what I mean? Uh, and I remember this one time in college, I went with a girlfriend to, like, uh, 
she she was in French class, okay, and she had like a a wine tasting thing, like the whole French class put on like a wine tasting at like the professor's house, okay, and you know I I knew French then. And, you know, some French, like enough to kind of conversate in a very, very basic level. But I remember like the, the, um, the professor, she, she asked me, I, f I forget exactly. Anyway, she asked me in French to give her, like there were some limes on the table and a bunch of other stuff. There was a bunch of food on the table. And she asked me to give, give her a lime in French. And I was like, I didn't know the word for lime. I was like, oh shoot, what is that? But of course, after, like, after that awkwardness of like not knowing it. For like one second, now, you know. Now I know the French word for lime. You know what I mean? Like a, a a modicum of embarrassment will help you remember it far more than some stupid. I mean, that's the only time I like heard the word before then. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, Joe sends in five dollars. Thoughts on kombucha, homemade of course, and also socks. Uh, kombucha, I've never made it. I mean, it's the stuff in the store is also like way too sugary. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's it's one of the few drinks that I'm okay with. So I mean, one of the biggest issues with people nowadays is they drink calories. You know, you basically should unless you're drinking like milk. You know, you shouldn't really be drinking calories. That, that's my view. Uh, well, mostly because people just drink, like, sugar. You know what I mean? Uh, but kombucha is fine. Like, it's, it's you know, just a kind of fermented tea for people who don't know. Um, but, yeah, the stuff in the store is, like, way too heavily sugared. Um, I, I've actually thought about making it in the past. You just need, like, some bacterial cultures and some other things. But I've never done it. I'm, I might know one or two people who know how to do it. Um, and on socks, like, I'm not... Um, Actually, I'm not wearing socks right now. I'm just, I just have, you know, my shoes here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them. I do wear them with tennis shoes, but I find them pretty, like, I'm, I'm really just against shoes in general. I pretty much walk out, like, when I record videos outside, I'm basically always barefoot. Unless, like, there are some places I walk with shoes. Like, if I'm, I'm further, there's some areas I take shoes to, but in general, I walk barefoot outside all the time. Um... And that's actually hard where I live because there are things like sand spurs and like basically these there there's these absolutely demonic plants that like they have these seeds that are just like wooden splinters. You know, they just have splinters in every direction and you step on them and they hurt so much. But I've basically I've basically cleaned out sand spurs from all around my property just manually ripping them up. They're usually a total blight. Uh, but the places I walk usually, you know, I don't I, I don't wear shoes, I, you know, I, and I don't walk around them. They, they, those things, sand spurs, they grow most commonly like on roads in places where woods have been artificially cut down. That's usually the problem. And when I moved into my property here and bought it, like, um, they were just all over the place. Like, they were actually right outside my window here. They were just all over. But I, I went out, like, there were days where I would spend, like, hours just pulling them up so I didn't have to deal with them just because I'm, I'm such a fan of just being barefoot. Um, so... Einsteinium uh, sends in some XMR. I'm 18 years old from Europe, studying bioinformatics, living at my parents' house. My goal is to eventually live in the, live in the country and be independent, uh, but working in this branch. I feel school is, ve school is very insufficient and cringe, but I don't know what else to do. Any suggestions? What's your secret to studying? Okay, so a couple questions in there. So, here, one, one thing, when I do videos on like, oh, you should move to the country, you should, you know...
All right, I'm streaming now. Yeah, okay, audio should be back. Yeah, of course, of course, I don't check the chat. Of course, I don't check that. I don't know if if I'm like I have I if I actually have audio. I have no clue. What, what was the last thing that I was talking about? No, it actually wasn't Pulse Audio. It was actually Ulsa. No, really, really, it's OBS because if if I I, I like unplug my mic mic slightly, if, if I plug it back in, I have to like reset OBS or something. It's totally stupid. Uh, so what was I talking about when the audio went out? I'll probably have to like cut that portion out. How long was I talking? The whole rant about what? What was I talking about? Too long ago to remember. Yeah, I don't think I was talking about circumcision. <laughs> what, what was I talking about? It, it, oh, it's been here like 10 minutes. Who knows? Okay. Oh, you wanted you were talking about the guy who wanted to move to the country uh, in bioinformatics. So yeah, that that was basically the last one. I just talked a long, long time about that, and then someone asked about the Uyghur genocide, Uyghur quote unquote genocide. Well, I'll read I'll read that one out again. Okay, so Vietnamese person sends in some XMR. He says thoughts on China. The U.S. cries out Uyghur genocide as he proceeds to bomb every country in the Middle East. He defends his hypocrisy by using whataboutism as an excuse to bash China. While doing nothing to stop his country's own bombings, also glad you recognize that Taiwan belongs to China. I mean, yeah. I mean, obvi obviously, you know, any American, like, if you, if you see stuff that, like, they say about China or Russia and you take it at face value, you're just, like, delusional. Um, I mean, at the worst, you know, China has, like, these re-education camps for Uyghurs. But so I don't know anything about it. It's none of my business. And I know basically everything I've heard about it, I've heard through the American media lens. So it's probably not. Like, I, I know that they're lying about this country. I know that they're lying about everything else they do. So I'm going to assume they're lying about that, too. You know, so I think that's a good heuristic. So it's none of my business. You know, if the if the Uyghurs have a bad time, uh, if they have a bad time in China, I feel bad for you, son. But, you know, I'm not going to take the American... Uh, uh, opinion molding classes, uh, you know, advice on that. So, um, anonymous sentence from XMR, please do a video on Knitter, Bibliogram, Invidious, etc. They are good as a first step for moving away from social media. I mean, uh, are, they are good as a first step. Sure, maybe. No, I mean, uh, I don't. I don't even want to say that. Like, I'm not a big fan of those. Like, for, for those people who don't know, like, these are. There's software that you can run on your own servers that basically just talk to, you know, they're basically just a front end for Twitter. So you can install Knitter on your own server and people can go to it and basically browse Twitter through your site. So it's privacy respecting for them. And really, I mean, the real reason to use it, I mean, it's privacy respecting, sure, in general. Um, but like the real reason for me to use it is like Twitter and sites like that. They're so bad in terms of how poorly written they are. Whereas Knitter is just like a plain HTML site. You know, it's like no, no. Uh, stupid crap flying across the screen or, or I don't know. So, um, but I'm not, I, I don't know what bibliograms for. Invideos is for YouTube, I know. Um, but I'm not a big fan of the, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not a big fan in the sense that I think they're bad, but I just think they're kind of a placebo solution. Like the real solution is to not, not use these sites. The only one that I use is Knitter because I will be, you know, directed to Twitter posts every once in a while and I'll read them. Um, Bibliogram, I don't know what that's for. I'm, I know there are, like, Reddit equivalents, which, like, Reddit is a site that's so bad you shouldn't even, like, use, uh, use it through some other site. Uh, well, Twitter is too, but, like, you know, there there are some things on Twitter to look at. Reddit is just, like, innavigable, and it all has garbage stuff on it. I mean, Twitter has garbage stuff too, like, but, you know. Um, and as it comes to Invidious, like... Uh, I use normal YouTube instead of Invidious because uh, A, I watch very little on YouTube, and B, when I'm on YouTube, I'm like uploading something or something that I can't do on Invidious, right? Um, so I'm not against them, but like I'm not going to do a video on them. Like I would rather people not use social media in general. Um, so $1 from, uh, I guess this guy's DJ. Anyway, Luke, I just want to thank you for all your videos on Linux and free software. Uh, it's thanks to you that I learned to appreciate free software. Without your videos, where you go, without your videos where you go over scripts that you wrote or how you configured a program where you showed something you discovered, I would probably never have used Linux seriously. Yeah, I mean, but before I came to YouTube, um, like, there were very, like, pe people who did Linux, actually, this is still kind of the case, right? 
Um, most Linux channels out there were really just people installing desktop environments and like making comments about them. But, uh, you know, the only, and the only thing, it's not like I was like, oh, let me change that. But, you know, I guess what I did is I started looking at, here are the configuration files I use and this is why I changed this. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff you can do. Because if you're just doing those like desktop environment videos or whatever, you're just, you're just giving people a different graphical environment that functions the same as Windows or Mac or something like that. Um, so, you know, the, my, my whole thing when I started my YouTube channel is, well, if I'm going to do videos on programs on Linux, I'm going to show people what they can do with them. What, what's the actual point of it? Um, I think I did a video a couple years ago. I think I was standing on a dead tree when I talked about, maybe, maybe it was that one. I'm trying to remember where I filmed this one. Like there's so many videos, like I only barely remember, but you know, I talked about the fact a lot of people try to sell Linux to people, um, you know, as if it, oh, it, it's so close to Microsoft Windows, so you can, it's going to be easy to use. No, people don't, people aren't going to switch for that. You know, they're going to switch if it's something, di if it can do something different and new and they can get something new out of it, right? Um, all right, so anyway, thank you. Um, Josh sends in $5 saying you have no audio. Okay, yeah. Uh, looks like I got a couple emails about that. Um, <laughs> um Einsteinium sends in some XMR. Hey, Luke, at the start of the previous question, you muted your mic. Yeah, okay. okay. Could you answer it again? My pre... Okay, but which one was Einsteinium? Yeah, so, so by informatic... In, in case you didn't hear the rest of that, don't, um, don't fixate on your degree, okay? If you get a degree in bioinformatics, that's fine. I got degrees in stuff. Like, don't be like, oh, I have to have a job in this. Don't make that be, um, you know, something that keeps you from that. And, um, yeah, as for studying, I think I, I, this is probably what I spent a lot of time talking about, which is probably good. It got muted because it was probably a little egocentric, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I basically do not, I don't, I've never done studying. Uh, like I don't take, like in class, I never took notes. Um, that's just how I am. I, I kind of feel like note taking that, that, that whole genre of behavior that we teach students is kind of bad. Like, I don't really think the human brain is fit for it. Like I don't, th I, th I think it's just something you tell students to do and it's kind of a convention. I've never taken notes. I've never really studied. Like I, I think I said my answer before that may have gotten cut off. Like, you know, I did my degree in economics and I learned literally nothing in my degree. And it seems like you say the same thing um, because, you know, I had already learned that stuff beforehand. Right. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm just not, maybe, maybe I'm different from some people. Maybe some people need to have notes and things like that. But I, I, I kind of have the idea that most people, you know, if they, if they had more naturalistic ways of learning and rem memorizing things or not even memorize, like memorization is not, it's not really, a, I'm kind of anti-memorization. What I'm trying to get at is like, you have to look at the, th the things you know as an interconnected web. Okay. So in linguistics, actually, this, here's a little anecdote for you. Um, if you put people in experimental uh, circumstances and, you know, you're giving, in, giving them information and seeing what they can recall and stuff like that. If you give them a sentence like this, okay, let's say you, you have, uh, you know, uh, two little sentences. The king died, then the queen died. Okay, two sentences, right? Um, then you give them more information. Compare that with another group of people who are told... The king died, and then the queen died of grief, okay? So in both, both cases, the same factual information is happening, except for in the second case, you actually have more information. The queen died specifically of grief. But in experimental circumstances, you actually find that the second people who are given the second stimulus, right? The, you know, more information that interrelates the two data points, that it, that's actually easier to remember, right? Getting more information, it, you know, if you if you remember information not as crap written on a note card, but interconnected with other things that you know, it will be easier to remember. Okay, that is just by definition how things work. Okay, so uh, that is what I would say on that. And you know, all of the way that we tell kids to take notes and all the stupid stuff and studying, it's basically learning things. And the king died, the queen died. You're just learning information that has nothing to do with anything else. Right. That, that's what note cards are that, you know, that's where they're at. So, you know, when I when I learn a language, you know, let's say I want to learn, I don't know, Dutch. OK, 
you know, I'm going to think about things in terms of, or, you know, maybe something more exotic, maybe like a, some kind of Rado Romanche language, you know, one of those language, languages in Switzerland, okay? So I'm going to be remembering words based on, okay, well, I know this word in Latin. I'm going to connect this. It, this comes from a Latin word. And, uh, oh, this one comes from some Germanic word uh, and blah, blah, blah. You know, like th there's all these interrelation. Like information is never just something out in the middle of nowhere. It's not just a random digit you get, you know, as a security code, you know, from, from some service. It's like information that connects with things that other things, right? And it's the same thing in everything else, right? So th that's my viewpoint. That's why I don't, uh, I don't take notes. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I've never done it. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my take on that. Uh, Mark says, Luke, you have moted, <laughs> muted your mic. Yeah, okay. Also, what watch are you wearing? I don't know. This is this watch I got like 10 years ago. Um, Croton, it says. It, it's not a fancy watch. It's, it was maybe like $70 back then. Um, uh, your volume is off, retard. It's been like 10 minutes and you don't look at YouTube chat? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, I think we got through all your muted. I think we got through all of those. Okay, Henry sends in some XMR. How, how is the well going? How's the well going? Would you recommend getting one? Hard to find property with clean drinking water, even though uh, drinking water and even those near rivers are polluted. By the way, you are muted. Um, so the well, I mean, my well is fine. My well's fine. <laughs> I mean, what, what if you have an electric well, like you, you just set it until you eventually, you know, you, you might unluck, be unru unlucky and run out of water where you're pulling it from. But um, which my well was actually redrilled re uh, before I moved in, like it was drilled at one place and then it ran out and then they just like moved it 10 feet, you know, and then it works fine. So that's all, that's sometimes how it is. Drilling a well is pretty expensive. It could be like $10,000, you know. Um, but yeah, I do want to get a hand well eventually. Maybe, maybe you're referring to that. You know, I, I may have mentioned I wanted that. Uh, would you recommend getting one? I mean, yeah, like, so if it's your only, op so, well, I will say this, if you're already using city water and you just want to branch out a little bit, it might be cheaper and easier to do uh, a catchment system, you know, like, uh, catching rain and purifying it or something like that. I mean, well, yeah, purifying it might be an issue because you might get, be getting some kind of nasty rainwater depending on where it, what it's touching or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, for, for cleaning up well, well water, some people are lucky. Like I have neighbors who are lucky and just pull pure water out of the ground. Uh, I do have a water softener and that just gets rid of, you know, iron and stuff like that. My, my water is pretty, uh, was, I looked at this as if it was going to look like this, but like it comes out very white. Like if, um, if I don't have the softener, but you know, this pure purifies it up. Um, whenever I'm in a city and I have to drink like fluoridated water, I truly, I don't know. I truly understand why urban people are so blue pilled on everything. I, I can just feel my pineal gland calcifying, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike is muted. Yeah, yeah. Mike is muted. Uh, is Steve, uh, Google sends in $5. Is Steven crash and base? I don't know who that is. Um, no idea who that is. Uh, Flair sends in $10. Handmade leather sandals, based or gay? On a more serious note, uh, thank you for your video rantings. They played a very big part in my conversion to the Catholic Church this Easter. Great. Um, so leather sandal, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if you can make them and make them well, I mean, they're, they're, it's a good idea. Um, I actually am thinking about getting some flip-flops at some time. One thing I've, I've never had it in my life is flip-flops. I've, I've thought about getting some. Um, there were years ago, I had like these minimalistic, faux minimalistic sandals that cost like a hundred bucks. Uh, and they, they were kind of sucky. Well, I, I kind of accidentally got a shoe size too big, you know, you know, when I, when I was growing up, right. Uh, cause I have pretty wide feet. I, I have bigger feet than most people. Um, definitely on the wide side. Uh, but, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I, I think I ordered, you know, most tennis shoes in America, they just like size everything up. So I was wearing like 13s or whatever. Uh, so I think I got like this minimalist sandal. I think I got it in like a 12 or a 13 when I probably should have had an 11, but you know, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, but if you can homemade homemade leather leather sandals, they're good. Uh, Annie sends in five dollars. Favorite fictional books, if any. Um, very few fictional books I might enter. Like I, I've never been a fiction person. Now there are certain authors who I've read, like mostly short story stuff. So I got into uh, Jorge Luis Borges probably when I was in college, and I have I have uh, maybe a couple books of his. So he has basically short stories, and like his, if you don't know his stuff, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but it, it's all worth. Find it hard to like a lot of books are just long winded. That's that's just my view. Novels especially. I mean, really. Um, so like I really just kind of like there are probably some other short story writers that you know I'm I'm fine with but those are the first two that come to my head Borges and Lovecraft which are totally different I mean well I don't know maybe maybe there's a sense in which they have some similarities but um, you know Lovecraft is all that ancient not ancient alien stuff but you know really ancient alien stuff comes from H.P. Lovecraft that like that's ultimately where it comes from even though he does things that are totally different so. Um, but uh, let me think. There, there might be like a one-off fiction book. Uh, let me, let me look at my fiction section. There, are, there honestly are just not many fiction books I've ever been big into. I actually earlier this year, or maybe it was last year, I did. Um, I re I reread Lord of the Rings for the first time since I was like in eighth grade. But I, I wouldn't say I especially like Tolkien or anything like that. Um, Ryan sends in ten dollars. Your tree issue might be due to not having the right uh, mycorrhizae in your soil. Your soil. What tree? I'm trying to think what tree you're talking about. Um, how much did you factor in future climate predictions, including migration models for refugees in your land choice? <laughs> uh, I'm in my early 20s and uh, like where I live, but it's booming. Water is running out in the rest of the land. And the rest of the land, I feel connected to it. Wait. And the rest of the land I feel connected to is extremely expensive. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what tree issue you're talking about. Maybe I was talking about a tree issue last stream. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I talked about my olive tree that died. Um, yeah, I've, I've never really looked into growing stuff like that seriously to, you know, look into bacteria or even pH. Like, I've never taken pH of, of my soil. I mean, my soil is, my soil is very sandy. So I think that, wait, does that make it more alkaline or what? I, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> I, I don't think of that much. Actually, you know, these books, they will tell you all about that. But it's just I've never, I, I don't have a kit for checking pH. Um, now, in terms of future climate predictions, quote unquote, and migration models. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. I will say I had an uncle who moved, you know, when I was maybe 20 years ago. He moved to a place that was super rural. It was south of Atlanta. Okay, there was nothing around. And now it's basically height of suburbia. Like it's, you know, there are all these, um, I mean, it, it's not rural, suffice it to say. I mean, his, his little section, his neighborhood kind of looks, looks rural, but it's not even a dirt road anymore. And, you know, they just have shopping centers and stuff all over the place. So, yeah, that is, that is a big issue. Um... I would I would make your decision partially based on like if you are going to move to the country and then in 20 years like it's not going to be the country that's kind of an issue. Now, it might be less of an issue if you're in terms of long-term living, I would just really want to move to a place where there's no threat in the next 100 years basically uh that it's going to become some kind of suburban area or something like that. And um so just think of it in terms of, like, cities are kind of evangelical hive minds. Like, they're going to spread out. They're going to keep spreading out. So if you can, if you're within a metropolitan area, or if you can commute to a city, like, if you can commute to a big city in 30 minutes, like, I would, I would not trust that area. Um, you know, again, it might be fine to move there for a period, and if it becomes really urban, sell it and make money, that's one thing. But if you're talking about, I want to live long term and have a multi-generational household and pass this land down to my children, eh, that mm, it's a little questionable, right? Um, so I don't know. So DJ uh, sends in a dollar. Thought on, thoughts on media servers. 
Thoughts on homebrewing and distilling. You live in the woods. Uh, you live in the middle of the woods in Ger Georgia. So when in Rome, dot, dot, dot. Thoughts on going to university and getting a degree compared to going to a trade school and getting a certification on some sport of some sort. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a, a still that I use for like distilling, uh, what have I still done that? Like I, I've, I've made like essential oils <laughs> before, but I've never done any kind of, uh, home brewing or distilling of alcohol, which I think I forget what the legality of that even is in the United States, but I think it's something weird. I want, I do have relatives who make beers and stuff. Um, but I think, I think for like some kind of alcohol that might not be legal in the United States in some places, either way people do it. Um, but I've, I've never looked into it. I'm not, I'm not an alcohol person. I'm not really into it. Um, I do have enough grapes to probably make some wine, but you know, never done it. Um, on going to university and getting a degree as opposed to getting a certification. Yeah. I mean, getting a certification in something is obviously more solid. Oh, I'm looking at the live stream. It's like not, okay. It's moving. It's moving a little bit. Um, getting a certification is probably much more solid and much more, um, I like, I'm trying to think of it. Like if your life plan is to do something like me and move into the country and something like that, a certification is probably infinitely better. Okay. Because yes, do degrees, like just having a degree, even if let's, let's just assume that you're not going to learn anything and you're just getting a degree to have that on your resume which is why 99% of people do it or because, oh, I just have to have a degree to do this. Like you're not, le you're not learning anything when you do your degree, right? I think we can all agree on that. Either way, the purpose of having a degree is just having that box checked off. Um, is that like, if you had to choose either or, which would you do? It depends on the life you're going to live. Like if you're going to, um, honestly, I think a certification is probably better. I'm not going to give a full-throated recommendation for it because, um, that's not what I did because I didn't, I didn't know better when I was a kid, you know, I went and went and got a degree. So, um, you know, it'd be kind of cheap if I said, Hey, do this thing that I'm not, I didn't do. Cause you know, I didn't know better, but, um, my way of putting it. So I, I actually have, uh, my cousin, for example, you know, he got a degree in school, which he's not using. Um, and then he decided to get a cert certified as an electrician. Okay. So he has to do that. So he did years of schooling and now he's doing years of this certification and, and journeyman-ness or something. Well, I don't know how it all works, right? Um, but either way, you might think, oh, well, having a degree, that like gets me really far in my career and stuff like that. Oh, I can, if I'm in the country, I, you know, my, I'm head and shoulders above all these people who don't have degrees. I mean, that, sure, that's true in some jobs, but there's even more of a scarcity in terms of like these certifications, right? So like in our county, I don't know, there are not many electricians. Like if you want electrical work done legally, that is a very difficult thing to do in this county. There's basically, you know, one guy, one or two guys doing it, right? So that's actually much more lucrative, okay? So like you could easily make six figures, you know, depending on how you do it in a lot of trade jobs, right? So getting a certification is probably a better financial investment. And it's, of course, it's even more massive in the country where you're, you're, you have a lower, um, you know, cost of living and things like that. So, uh, you know, my, my reflex would say to, you know, get a kind of certification, um, or go to some kind of trade school as, as long as you're kind of set on that, but you know, it's not the end of the world. I mean, you know, I, I went to, I was in college again, my view on things was different when I was in college, but like getting a college degree, if you're just like doing four years, like that's not going to kill you. It, I mean, you're, you, the most thing you're wait. Well, if you're going into debt, that's going to kill you. Um, but if you, if you not, it's not killing you. Um, it, but it isn't. It is kind of a waste of time. Um, but it's not killing you. You know, to to do a degree. And of course, it still does matter. Like the degrees, getting a co college degree nowadays is mattering less and less every day. Okay, like more and more people are saying, oh well, these everyone has them. They don't really matter. Okay. But it still does make a difference. Like there are jobs that you cannot, like you will not be able to apply to unless you have a college degree. Right. So the, the, everyone's backup job is just to be a school teacher. Right. <laughs> Cause anyone can do it. Right. Um, so it, you, you gotta have a degree to do that. Like some kind of degree. Well, actually there are places you could probably do it without a degree. You could probably get some kind of certification that doesn't even require that, but either way, you know, whatever. So uh, anonymous sends in XMR and says bibliogram is for Instagram. Oh, well, you definitely shouldn't use it. 
Sites allow you to subscribe via RSS, meaning you can subscribe to a Twitter without having an account. Yeah, yeah, I know that. That is, that is one other benefit. I think in my RSS feed reader, I do have RSS subscriptions to some Knitter instance, so I can look at Twitter profiles. But yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, by the way, try making sauerkraut easy to make and nice with uh, Mia, I guess meals or something that got cut off. Uh, thoughts on meritocracy. Uh, why is the cathedral turning against it? I mean, because there's enough, like there's enough, well, two reasons. There's enough talent in the system that they don't need most people to be talented. You know what I mean? Like they're like, that. that's not so much like they don't need to find high IQ people because they have enough high IQ people to keep the system going. You know what I mean? Uh, and partially, mostly what the cathedral I think is, is focused on is allying with people who don't who don't have lives who, who like aren't functional in society you know so um you know destroying meritocracy like if you get if you get people who are like gender confused bug men who like i don't know kind of personally inept things like that i don't know um who have mental health problems all that kind of stuff those people are great assets for the opinion molding class because they don't have another option. They're going to be very, I don't, they are going to be very much tied to the system, right? Because if they if they don't have somewhere else to go, that that is the best way of keeping them in check, right? So you want to have like in any good governing system, like you you need some competent people, and I think the the cathedral definitely has enough. But um, it's also great to have inept people, like to have incompetent people, because you know so so long as they don't destroy the system, as so long as you put them in kind of I don't know, like kind of affirmative action roles, so to speak, where it's just like, you know, BS jobs. I mean, that, that, that's that's when I was in grad school, this is kind of what grad school has become, okay? Like what universities are now is a way of employing these psychologically unemployable people who don't, like, they don't do anything, you know? But a lot of the younger generation of graduate students are people who are just, they, they can't, they, they psychologically are not all there together like they're not um they, they can't really hold down a job they're very neurotic and 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 egocentrical like they're always thinking about themselves and like all the all these weird stuff like they don't really necessarily function in in you know traditional work well um or, or and at the same time you know they're not people who are more entrepreneurial as well they're not like egocentrical and kind of a business you know entrepreneur sense either like they're they're just kind of bad they just everything nothing is going for them Okay, and th that's what the system tries to do. Uh, the system does try to make people inept. They try to take them away from their families. They try to, you know, stigmatize doing work and like having, you know, being productive and getting rich. And you know, like they want to stigmatize all these things because they want to have people who are like tethered to doing nothing because they make the best functionaries, right? So meritocracy, it was necessary, like in the earlier 20th century. You, like you need some competent people to run the system, right? And I think there was, there is very much, I mean, that's what, um, you know, the book, The Bell Curve is about, okay? Um, which I don't know, people erroneously think that book is like about race or race and IQ or something like that. I mean, there's one chapter that's like on racial stuff, but it's only as a proxy for class. The point, the real point of the book, The Bell Curve is, um, you know, it's, it's, the, the American education system during that period started favoring kids who are just higher IQ or ha have higher cognitive abilities independent of their class origins, right? So there was this intellectual sorting that happened in American life where, you know, you had these higher IQ people who live with higher IQ people, and then you have this growing, you know, middle and underclass that is disconnected from them, Um and now that that has happened, now that they have enough of those competent people, they are littering it with allies. You know what I mean? That that's basically what's going on. That's how I would um, look at it. So yeah, meritocracy. And uh, yeah, of course, there will be a breaking point. There is a sense in which, like a lot of these institutions, like universities, there is a point where they will not be able to function, right? But um, you know, there's still some time with that. Uh, let's see. Oop. Let me turn that off. Uh, let me look at the chat. 
So, um, Costin sends in some XMR. Uh, Luke, is it uh, now more expensive to do a Monero donation? It is now more expensive to do a Monation Dinero. Monation Dinero. <laughs> it is now more expensive to do a Monero donation than a YouTube Super Chat. P please reduce the Monero, Monero donation amount back to 0 0.005. Thank you. Also, do you have any thoughts on the Bronze Age mindset? Well, the reason I increased the amount is... Um, well, like, I'm getting enough donations that I can read them constantly, you know what I mean? That's more what I'm... If, if I lowered it, you know, that would be an issue. Although I did think about that before I started. I might I might actually lower it anyway because, um, um, yeah, it does... There is a... Uh, well, to be clear with YouTube Super Chats, if you donate, like, $2 in a YouTube Super Chat, I'm getting, like, zero of that. I'm getting, like, 30 cents. So it's not... cost Like, there's no system cost to it. But, yeah, I might, I might lower the... Um, I might lower the amount, but if if I have time <laughs> uh, while I'm reading all these. Um, so, uh, Bronze Age Mindset, I'm aware that that guy exists and, like, that little movement or whatever, but I, I, I don't really know. I never read that book. I know it was a big meme, um, but, yeah, I never really got into it. I mean, from what I hear, like, their, their memes and their, their, their lines on things seem all right. Like, they seem pretty cool or whatever, but I don't know anything about them. Um, based on Turkey Pill, send in, sends in $5. Monero lets people more securely transact for bad things like prostitution and drugs, which government try, governments try to control. How do you weigh these apparent drawbacks versus the broader freedoms Monero's, Monero and systematic privacy in general bring? Is there a way to get the best of both worlds? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Monero is really just turning us back to a realm of cash. Like, um, yeah, those things are possible. Over, like, doing bad things are is possible under Monero, but it's possible, you know, with OPSEC using other things or using cash or things like this. So that's less of an issue. I mean, really, um, you know, if we lived in a world where we had like this perfect and honest government and, you know, a financial system that wasn't censoring people and all this kind of stuff, um, you know, or they were only censoring like degenerate like stuff and, and people doing really bad things, uh, would I be as enthusiastic about Monero? I mean, probably not. Um, it has, it, in our world, it has a much more important, uh, you know, kind of incidental use in that the people who are being financially censored and, and, and monitored and things like this are, are basically the good guys, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of like the world is reversed. But um, yeah, that is, that is a legitimate question. Um, but I don't think that it will facilitate... I mean, it's like having guns, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I having guns make some types of crime or suicide or things easier. You know what I mean? That is true. But when it comes down to it, I think individuals should have the right to, I mean, if, if the government has the right to defend you lethally, why shouldn't you? You know what I mean? And I think it's the same thing with Monero. Like, yeah, if bad people, you know, if they are going to wiggle around and use all this fancy OPSEC to, to get security, and if they're going to use this technology, of course, normal people should be using the technology as well. Right, that's my way of, of looking at it. And I think I said in one of my articles on Monero on my site, like people have this idea that oh Monero's gonna empower like criminal organizations and all this kind of I mean you can already do that. Like these people can already use Bitcoin and things like that if they use it wisely and use it in a you know, there are ways of achieving private Bitcoin. But the big gains of privacy are the the boomers, the normie boomers who are going to be using this technology and they're not gonna be thinking about it. You know what I mean? So the main drawback for a, a uh, public blockchain like Bitcoin or most cryptocurrencies is just the fact that normal people are going to get into it and they're going to end up stubbing their toes or really hurting themselves because they don't, they don't think about privacy in the way that criminals do. Whereas Monero actually kind of narrows that gap. Um, so yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, like, uh, yeah, most of these things, you know, drugs and prostitution, like, People use cash for that kind of stuff. Like, um, will it become slightly easier to do with Monero? Yeah, I think it, I think it would. In the same way that suicide becomes easier with guns, right? Um, but uh, you know, I think the gains are so much bigger, it's, especially in our incidental case. Again, where it's the good people who are being censored, right? That the, those are the things we have to keep in mind. So, uh, Marcus sends in some XMR. Have you watched JoJo's? I, if it's uh, the anime. I have seen that. Cringe. I know. Um, Anonymous sent in some XMR. Hey, I sent you a donation a few weeks ago, but not sure whether you read it yet. 
Uh, anyways, if the education system is beyond repair, how would you educate your future children? Would you homeschool? Thoughts on classical Christian, the classical Christian education movement. Uh, D.L. Sayers, The Lost Tools of Learning. Pretty much everyone I know uses classical Christian education. Um, like, basically everyone. Yeah, yeah that, like, that's kind of the universal. Uh, and I don't know that much about it. I will tell you that. Um, but from what I hear is it's pretty solid. So, um, and they, you know, they have everything. You know, kids are learning Latin and stuff like that. Um, and, um, the, the stuff I've seen from it is pretty solid, like, I, and I don't necessarily know all the justification behind it, but I will say in real life, like people I know that is widely used. Okay. I know many homeschooling groups that are using it. Um, so yeah, I mean, educate, like the thing, uh, I mean, I think most mildly intelligent people were not educated in school anyway. Okay. Like, I really think if you think about it, most of your learning was done outside of formal schooling. Uh, I'm kind of like, this is mostly a LARP, but I'm, I'm, I've had friends who have done this thing called unschooling, quote unquote, which is basically just legally telling the government, yeah, I'm homeschooling my children, but you really do no formal education whatsoever. Like it's really just, I don't want to say it's like child driven, but it's very much, nat it's, it's much more naturalistic. Now I'm sympathetic to that. I don't know how workable that is. Like you, you really do need some kind of structure in some forms of education, like to, just to get reading and things like that you know, uh, uh, marked off. But, um, yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes down to it, like, I really don't think there's a big gap between your average high school graduate and, you know, as someone who's raised in our literate culture without any kind of schooling whatsoever. I'm not convinced that there's a big difference. So I'm not very worried about, <laughs> I'm not very worried about like lack of education or anything like that. But yeah, classical Christian stuff like seems pretty good. Um, uh, of course, now it's there's not even a debate. Like there used to be that that period when I was younger, where people used to say, "Oh, well, homeschool kids—they're like not going to be properly educated, or they're going to be weird." Well, now look at public school kids. Okay, I rest my case. I rest my case. Like if you want a normal child, you cannot send them to one of those grooming facilities. You have to, and they're not learning anything. Like you know, and, and there are there are good schools like uh, in rural places like. Uh, people say that the grade school near where I am is pretty good. Um, you know, I maybe that's true. Um, there are still some good public schools in very rural places. Okay, but it's pretty rare, and I wouldn't bet on it. Like I wouldn't bet on it surviving like ten years because if I mean, if you wanted, if you want proof of this, just look, just look at education curricula in schools now. Okay, in universities, like the kind of stuff they're teaching these girls. Uh, like the, the kind of social brainwashing that goes on there. And yeah, I don't know. It's almost like I rest my case. Um, DJ says, uh, since in a dollar thoughts on owning firearms in a, both a hobby sense or a hunting self-protection sense are guns a meme. I mean, you should definitely have a gun gun. I'm not really interested in like gun culture hunting. I mean, hunting as a, as a entertainment, uh, like hunting for food. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Um, but hunting for entertainment, never been interested in. Uh, yeah, everyone should have guns, though. Um, absolutely. Because it, it's, it, as I said before, you know, it's like, um, you know, if you trust the government to use lethal force to defend you, wh why wouldn't you, you, why wouldn't you self-host your lethal defense? You know what I mean? It's one of those really, ba it, it's crazy also that there are countries in the world, Europores, poor Europores, where many of them, especially Bangistanis, that basically don't have the right to, I mean, if someone comes into your house, like, you can't even, like, fight them. <laughs> let alone, like, like, with a knife, let alone with a gun, you know what I mean? So, um, it's probably not that bad. I just see some clickbait articles about that, and it's sad. Vietnamese person sends in some more XMR. I remember reading your article about nitpicking a long time ago. Could you bring back that article on your website? I, I think I wrote it during a period where I did. I was using some different system for my website, and I didn't transfer it over. Uh, there are actually a bunch of articles I plan. Well, I'm actually rewriting my website in Hugo, which I've been working on for a couple years. I haven't or years <laughs> for a couple weeks. I've just been tinkering on it. I should probably just finish that up and put it up. But I, I, the real thing is, like, uh, designing my main page, like that's the hardest part. The rest of the site is fine. But designing, like, the landing page, like, what links do I want to put up there? How big do I want them? Do I want, like, pictures that you click? I mean, you know, like, those kind of design choices. I actually have a lot of trouble 
I don't know, thinking that through how I actually want it to be. Although I actually have it now so that there's no nav bar on my website. Or, well, on the Hugo version that I'm going to put up. I don't know how I feel about that. But anyway, so yeah, if, if I think about the nitpicking article, I'll, I'll, um, I'll put it up. Um, also, how much does gas cost in your area? Gas in Mississippi costs like $4 now, right now. Yeah, I mean, it's at least that here. Uh, in some parts of North Georgia, like it's lower. I mean, you can get it in... Uh, I was at the Bucky's a little south of... Maybe north of Atlanta. There's one north of Atlanta and there's one south. I forget which one, but one of them had gas for like three thirty. But where I am, it's yeah, it's oh, it's easily over four. Like getting gas for four dollars a gallon is a, a bargain here. You can probably go out of your way to get it for four dollars, but um, and it's gone up like twenty thirty cents in the next in the past like two weeks or so. Okay, all right. I looked at the uh, YouTube chat. I see that there's a super chat. I've not been looking at YouTube super chats, but I'll read this one because I happen to see it. Martin says, thoughts on shared library tracking in package managers such as Void's uh, VBP, VBPS. It tracks shared libraries. Pac-Man doesn't, but it works since things are built and rebuilt. Uh, um, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I, I realistically speaking, I would say, uh, you know, I don't know. Um... I, I, I probably don't want to have a comment about it. Like, I'd have to think about, like, how that actually is. I, I mean, I don't know. Has it always, has VPPS always been like that? I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion about it. So I'll just say that. Um, there are probably reasons for doing it, but I'm just not familiar with it. So, um, all right, let me see. Uh, I'm gonna log into that XMR thing, and I will I will lower the um, donation amount. Uh, let's see. Shadow chat config, and I will I will half it, so it will be point zero one. Or no, wait, point yeah, point zero one. That sounds that sounds good. Okay, so so those of you who are poor and want to give smaller donations, you now can. Um, so DJ donates one dollar. Thoughts on the different types of music? I, I listen to so little music. I mean, most of it is just not entertaining to me. Um, acapella is obviously best. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't care. I mean, obviously most pop music I'm not going to like. I'm going to think is stupid. Um, I, I Music is just... just I, I, I'll just say... It's just not part of my life right now um, since I've been an adult. I mean, really, even when I was a kid, I've never been a musical person. I kind of I kind of listen to bands just because, oh, I'm supposed to like certain bands. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll pretend to like these even though I think they suck, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but no, I've never I've never been a big fan of music. I've, I'm just I just don't find it interesting. Um, I, I don't understand the identity that people um put on music you know just having oh like i don't know it's just weird it's weird i feel that way about a bunch of stuff though so you know whatever um okay i hope i didn't when i restarted shadow chat i hope i didn't screw up anyone's donation um or at least the message all right i'll look at the youtube chat for a second i only listen to dungeon synth <laughs> yep Packet loss is definitely from Starlink. It kind of sucks, to be honest. Yeah, uh, well, I think it's partially where I... I still... I literally still have my Starlink receiver on the ground. <laughs> I've still not mounted it. Because, you know, I don't... I don't really have the materials to build a mount, and I could buy a Starlink mount for, like, 40 bucks, but I don't really want to do that. So, it's still on the ground. <laughs> Pathetic. Yeah, there is packet loss. I will say, like... Um, usually the packet loss is not too big. I don't know how it is on the stream. Like, I've never watched through an entire stream of mine to see what it's actually like. Um, but usually it's not long enough to, to persist. But... Okay. 
You know, I really, I really do hate this web camera. I've probably complained about this before, but you know, it has, it gives you, you know, it looks like my right arm is like massively larger than my left. You know, like it's, it's one of those like kind of fit. I don't know if it's fisheye, maybe it's the opposite of fisheye, but look how small my left arm looks. And my right arm is like much bigger. You know what I mean? Or like if I, if I put my feet up, looks my, looks like my feet are enormous and the rest of my body is like puny. I, I really just don't like that. That makes me, when I record a video, I'm like self, I'm literally self, -con I'm not actually self-conscious about it, but it's like, ah, oh, that looks so weird. But now I've made you aware of it, so I've actually made it worse. So, um, I think, I think we complained about that on some other, uh, stream. Um, okay, let's see. I think I finally got through all the donations. Yeah, okay, great. I have nothing to read right now. Um... Your Kumar, Ugh, cringe. Trying to decide whether to core boot or just do a regular bias with whitelist removed. I mean, you, if you're gonna change it, you might as well core boot it, because I mean that. Like, you you want to disable that Intel management engine. Like, that's that's the whole point, you know? And I need to think more. Uh, this this laptop right here actually st still has its proprietary BIOS, which, you know, mean, means you can spy on me. All of our Glow friends can spy on us. So. Now, I actually don't know the... Um, I don't know how processors and telephones work. Although I'm going to... Oh, you know, Shadow Chat just broke. Look at this. Look at this bad gateway. What is this crap? Ugh. Gotta fix that. What did I mess up? Ugh. See if I ever decrease the, the money required to donate again. Let me check this. What went wrong? Let's just see if it refreshes. Da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, back to normal, All right? Okay, so, uh, Lock the Game Maker sends in $5. My mother was into unschooling. Um, I read better than most and write fine, but math has always been a little pain. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, whenever you have one of those, like, homeschooling things where it's just, like, especially if it's just one single family, there is a tendency for you to be biased in terms of what your mama knows or doesn't know. Now, I do know, I mean, the, the normal thing around here is a lot of people will just have homeschooling groups. And actually, like, I've had a homeschooling group that, like, that every once in a while they'll ask me, oh, do you want to, do you want to help us with Latin? Because, like, none of them know Latin, but, like, it's in the, the classical curriculum or whatever, the, the classical Christian stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's the big advantage of, like, homeschooling as a group. Um, because, you know, you're not, you're not going to have, if your mom doesn't know calculus you can still learn calculus, you know. Justin Murphy sends in a .01 XMR. Thank you for lowering, lowering the XMR dono threshold. Do you have any knowledge or interest in the theological thinker Simone Weil? I don't know who that is. Never heard of that. Um, never heard of that person. Hawk donates $1. I've already sent this message on YouTube. Super Chat, have you read the Transurfing books by Valid Zealand. The, the the number of things that people have asked me in this stream that I've never heard of is is drastically increasing. I mean, I'm glad it's not constantly getting questions about Jordan Peterson, but you know, no, I've never heard of this. 
Uh, I think the English version, the books are originally Russian, have only one book that summarize all five, so I can't really say that they are of the same value as the separate five books that were translated to French to be the most close to the real ones. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Tran Transurfing? Maybe I've heard... I don't know. That that rings like a very distant bell. Um, Zealand. Yeah, but no, I've definitely never read those. I don't know. I don't know about that. So... Anonymous sends in uh, some Monero. Thoughts on dating culture. What should a man look for in a woman before marriage? I mean, I mean, dating culture is stupid, of course. Um, like, the, the concept of dating is, like, basically cucked by definition. Like, this whole idea of, like, having having boyfriend and girlfriend. It's absolutely stupid. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just like a, a pseudo, pseudo marriage for coomers and stuff like this. And, like, I don't know. Most of the time, like, this is just, I mean, it's not, like, people who are doing that, kids who are doing that are not serious about, like, oh, like, I want to have a life and, you know, get married and do all this kind of stuff. Like, it's all, it's all for, like, I don't know, just nonsense. Um, so, avoiding it is good. Um, like, I would not, uh, I will, like, I, I have a, I, even back in the day, I had a tendency of not calling my girlfriends girlfriends and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't think of things in those terms, even if, like, you know. It, it's it's stupid. I will just say I, I think it's a bad idea. Um, and I think uh, people need to think less in terms of getting boyfriends or getting girlfriends or things like that. Um, when you find someone who's a serious uh, candidate for getting married to, then then you can get married to them. Like, you, you, you can skip that silly stage. That That's my view of it. Uh, it's called engagement. Like, if you don't want to get engaged with them, like, you shouldn't be doing it. In the same way, like, I look at all my ex-girlfriends, and the reason I know dating is stupid is because none, of, basically, I don't want to say none, but basi basically only in my weakest, uh, only in my weakest would I have actually married any of those girls. You know what I mean? They were all just like, oh, girl, oh, I got, gotta have a girlfriend. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be with this girl. You know what I mean? So, and, that, and that's the issue with people now that they want to do this like dating culture thing. And I don't know, it's, it's dumb. It's dumb. Like it existed for like maybe two generations and now it's like reaching levels of of absurdity that make it totally annulled anyway. Um, as for what a man should wor look for in a woman before marrying, I mean that should be obvious. I mean it should be obvious. Like the things, like I don't I don't know. Uh, I, uh, the the nat the things that you are naturally attracted to. Okay, is she a thought? If she's not, you don't marry her. I mean it's it's not that difficult. You know what I mean? Like th this is not this is like you asking how do I eat food? I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, my opinion that's that's true. Like it's 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 not a. If you're asking me like what what color hair should her be should she be or something like that doesn't doesn't matter. DJ sends in a dollar. Uh, what webcam are you using? How much does rural land go for Georgia ballpark park figures and thoughts on bohemianism? You are really squeezing all of these questions into one dollar donations over and over again, DJ. <laughs> you you could just do one where you like give all the well I guess I do have a character limit or something on that but whatever uh what webcam am I using I don't know it says the brand is all key a u key a u key a yeah a u key a u k e i y um how much does rural land go for in Georgia I mean stiff like land is especially in rural areas it is. Abs there, there are massive variations. Like, you can go to one county in one area and you will see houses going for crazy different prices. Okay? Cheap enough. You, like, you can go out there and you can find a place, even if you don't have that much money, you know, it can be done. Thoughts on bohemianism? I don't know what you mean by, by bohemia? By, like, the Czech Republic? I don't know. Um, don't know about that one. Volsel sends in Monero. Congrats on getting married. Is it... All it was cracked up to be. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, M. Hus M Hussein sends in a dollar. Uh, Luke, I'd say you're very gifted. I thoroughly enjoy your reviews of heterodox slash red-pilling books on not related. Any advice on finding meaning? Ever since I lost my faith, a 12 or Shia, I find it hard to be happy, even though I'm material materially more fortunate in our tradition we have a prayer denoting that one gains nothing in losing god and loses nothing 
in believing. Yeah, well, Pascal's wager, as we call it here. Well, you could become orthodox. Uh, that would be the ideal, but uh, I don't know. Depends on your uh, life situation, what uh, what is in store for you. Um, of course, I, I don't feel there are many heterodox books I actually talk about on not related. If anything, I talk about very, like I talk about academic books that are very kind of mainstream, like or at least the ones I've been doing recently. Um, I did like the population growth books on that episode, which I still haven't released on YouTube, but it's on not yeah, not related. Dot X Y Z down there. I'm trying to like make it look like I'm pointing down there, right? It's on. It's on the not related website, but it's not on YouTube. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you've become orthodox. That's my actual. And you said something in Arabic, but I think the um, yeah, the text got all messed up. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, or is it? No, is that Persian? I can't tell because like the the letters are all, all screwed up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't read it because it's like inverted and all this weird stuff. So, and the letters are not connected. Um, and of course, my my knowledge of Arabic, Arabic is very primitive. Um, uh, Keith sends in five dollars. Uh, hey Luke, thoughts on the Buffalo shooting? Schizo retard or Fed boy plant? Uh, I, I don't know. Someone mentioned that that happened to me in real life. I don't know. I like I don't keep up with this internet stuff. Shootings are always fake. They're always, he's probably a schizoid, schizoid, uh, schizoid retard and a fed boy. That's probably, I don't know anything about this and I don't care. Um, uh, DJ sends in 69 cents. Thoughts on Jordan Peterson? Ha ha ha. Tom sends in, uh, some XMR. Hey Luke, would you ever be open to moving past the Q&A format for live streams, it'd be cool to see uh, live conversation like a call on Jitsi, uh, like a Jitsi call on some, uh, like talking with someone else or like Q&A, like Q&A with random people who call in. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, if, if you're talking about interviews, like I'm not, I'm not a big fan of doing things with people on the internet, like collabs and stuff like that. Like I have done stuff. Like I did st something with Kevin Wad the other month. I think in June, some, some guy asked me to be on some podcast that I'm not even familiar with. Um, but, you know, I think I'll go on it. Uh, but I, in general, like, I'm not... Like, I don't want to make it a habit to do things with other people because I think that's kind of... I don't know. Like, you guys know this entire channel is just me. When I feel like doing it, I'm going to do it, you know? It's not, it's not like an official... This is not an official YouTube channel. I just want to be clear. Like, I just do this stuff. Like, I just get, I'm bored. Last night I was bored, so it's like, I'll do a live stream. I didn't end up having time, so I put it off for now, which I also have time. But, like, that, I don't know. But I'm not a planner. Like, I feel like that would require planning. Unless you're asking, like, me do Jitsi calls with people. Like, in, like you guys call in or something. I also feel like I would need, like, a call screener for that and some other stuff, you know. So, I don't know. I, I just kind of do it. Like, the thing is, I've always just... My live streams, the first live stream I did was literally just a test and people just asked me questions, so I answered them and I've really never just changed the format. I have thought about doing um, like longer winded videos where I like talk about something or like live streams and then answer questions. I did that once for an episode of Not Related, um, but I don't know. I don't know. Like it, it's kind of hard to... It, it's easy to sit here and like talk at the live stream for a while, but to have something more organized might be a little more difficult. I've probably gotten better at it now because I usually I usually do not related episodes in basically one sitting, maybe one or two, so I could probably do it. But um, Flair Flarium sends in five dollars. Is it reasonable to hold out hope for a more 2016-esque Trump campaign in 24, uh, 2024, or is that election going to be a wash? I'm mostly apathetic to national politics, but that uh, SCOTUS abortion leak a few months ago has got me a little excited. Yeah, I mean, well, that's not necessarily politics, but, like, if the Supreme Court weighed, not only is that good news, but, like, it means even more good news could be, like, in the ropes. Um, in terms of, like, good decisions and maybe kind of acceleration in the sense that, like, you know, liberals start to lose lose hope that they own the system entirely. Like the the matrix starts collapsing. Um, so either way, you know, it's probably a good thing. Um, 
But as for like uh, the presidential election in 2024, I mean, this time around, because I think when he first became president, he definitely had this idea that when he was president, it's just going to be like being CEO of the country and he's going to be able to change all these things and fix all these things. And of course, he ran into just like nonstop like fake ops, like from the beginning and, you know, the the whole Russia hoax investigation and all this kind of stuff, like just like um, as a big annoyance. But I think now he kind of understands how that stuff works, you know? Like, he understands that, like, this is much more of a political game that he's playing, right? So I think he will, he will be better a second time around. And if you look at prediction markets, okay? So prediction markets basically have... I looked at Predict It, I think, maybe last night. And, like, the, the most likely president in 2024, at, you know, maybe 20-something, 30-something sec, sec, uh, percent, is Trump. Second is Ron DeSantis, and third is Joe Brandon. So, like, I think this is a fair... And I do think there's a pretty poor chance of him winning re-election, considering, you know, he didn't really win the first election anyway. But, um, you know, so we'll see what happens. But um, I, I don't put hope in politics. Like, definitely don't do that. Like, um, I, or you, you can act on a political level while at the same time making decisions that put yourself in a position that make you less likely to be damaged by it, right? You know, when I, the, the, I should say, the period of my life where I finally decided to move into the country was actually when I lost hope in politics. And this was right before the 2016 election. The, the entire run up to the 2016 election, I was like, oh yeah, Trump is gonna win, no problem. It's not gonna be an issue. Polls are fake, of course. Um, but then like maybe a week or two before I was like, ah, shoot, I don't know. Maybe he's not going to do it. Uh, maybe Hillary is going to win. Maybe things are going to get bad. It was that, it was in that darkest moment that I was like, you know, I should probably, I, yeah, I really do need to act on like moving into the country. Like I really do need to leave the university. I really do need to do all this kind of stuff. Right. And so that, you know, at that point I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, like this has to happen. Things are only going to get worse. And you know, Trump got elected, right? So we, we basically bought four more years, kind of. I mean, things got really bad still during Trump's years anyways, um, you know. But, um, you know, so, so what I'm trying to say is, like, you can hope for the best in politics and you can act on a political level, but don't put your neck out. Like, you need to constantly be making decisions assuming the worst case scenario, right? So that's what I do. And in the, in the era of the internet, you can play both sides. Like, I remember back when Varg was on YouTube, Varg would have these, like, really, frankly, stupid takes. Because he would tell people to move out into the country and all this stuff, kind of stuff. But then he would say, if you ever even vote, or if you ever even, like, think about, or if you show any preference for any political candidate, you're like a shill, or like you're, you're, uh, you're compromised or something. I, I think that's just so stupid, because you can do both. Like, you can do, act as if the worst case scenario is happening. Prepare for the worst case scenario. But also, you you still, I mean, it's not hard to vote. Like, you just take two seconds to do it, you know? Um, you know, whatever. Garzit says, thoughts on insurance. Aren't they scams because people, aren't they scam because people that decide if they give money, give you money, are the same people, wait, aren't they a scam? Because people that decide if they will give you money, are the same people that should give you money. Uh, I mean, there are ways of adjudicating insurance contracts. Like, there's a court system that does that. Uh, of all the reasons to think insurance is a scam, I'm, I'm surprised you think that is the reason. But, um, I mean, health insurance is definitely a scam. Um, I, I, I don't know. Insurance in general, I think, is... Unless you're, like, extremely wealthy... Or extremely well propertyed and insurance probably is not as necessary as people think it is um, now I, I can understand where there are systemic risks I kind of understand the purpose of you know there being required car insurance for example like th there are reasons to do that you know if you get hit by someone who's uninsured or something like that right I can kind of understand that logic but yeah like health insurance and things like that are just like pretty uh, kind of crazy uh, well, it's really, like, health insurance exists in the United States as, like, an artifact of, like, wage and price controls in the New Deal and then in the 70s. Because, like, companies weren't allowed to pay their 
their workers more to reduce inflation. So they started offering them health insurance. And in the United States, it became just a thing that everyone just has all this health insurance. And then, of course, it just bids up the price of, you know, medicine and stuff like that. So... Um, Brain sends in some XMR. Thoughts on Jim's blog? Yes, that one. I don't... I legitimately do not know a Jim who has a blog. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, more, more things I don't know about. Great. Um, DJ says, have you tried Pipewire? I found that if you don't do anything fancy, it's basically a direct upgrade from Pulse Audio. Yeah, I use Pulse uh, or Pipewire on everything. I use Pipewire on... Um, uh, I mean, I, I use it on this laptop now. I use it on my computers. Actually, it now def, uh, installs by default if you install LARBs, if you install my dot .files. Uh, Pipewire is now default. Um, so, yeah, I've used it. And I, I don't really know the big advantages over Pulse Audio. It, I've, I've had some fewer bugs. But, um, you know, I, I guess it's kind of the wave of the future and it's worked out for me. So... I don't have to think about it. And it run, it works with everything that runs with Pulse Audio. So uh, everything made for Pulse Audio, it, it runs as well. So Matt uh, donates a single dollar. Um, recently cha uh, changed careers, working a lot with Linux, but I have to use Windows for some parts of my job. I just want to say um, I have all Apple products currently. And uh, in just four weeks, I've started to hate Mac OS more and more every day. Yeah. Well, the more you use it, the more you'll hate it. Um, yeah, I mean, Max, Apple is really the worst tech company in the world by far. Like, there, there's not even a debate as far as I'm concerned. Like, other companies, you know, they'll, they'll have a little planned obsolescence here or a little, you know, they'll, they'll get rid of something that, or do something on their own standard here. But Apple is truly the worst company in the universe, like in everything they do. Because their whole mindset is we, oh, we're big enough that we're going to do things our way. We are going to force our own standards on things. And it's affected everything. It's effect, it affects like, uh, you know, because they're st because Apple things are stupid. If you download my podcast, I will get emails every other week. I can't download your podcast. My podcasts are in OG files, which is a standard free, you know, an open source codec that's been around for or container that's been around for decades. Every machine is compatible with it, except for Apple because they refuse to. And they also refuse to use FLAC for years and years. Or, uh, you know, back back in the day when it came to like, back when iPods were invented. This is the first thing that actually pissed me off about Apple stuff. I probably complained about this years ago. But the first thing that pissed me off about Apple is that, you know, if you have an iPod, iPods can only sort things in preordained categories. So it used to be you tagged uh, songs for artists and then album artists. And those are two different things. Why are those two different things? An album artist is the person whose album it belongs to. Whereas an, if you have a track which is a collab, if you have a rap song with five different rappers, you have five different rappers in the artist tag and only one in the album artist, whoever al whose ever album that is, okay? So Apple decided, however, very early on that they would not use that standard. They would make up their own standard. They would only use the artist tag. So that means that you can't sort things by artist anymore, or at least in the traditional way. So people have to totally, re like they basically deprecated the album artist tag. And now the convention is to put everything in the title of the video. So you say, here's the title of my song featuring blah, 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 right? You feature the other four artists there. And the normal, the, the album artist is now the artist, right? That sounds like a minor nitpick. But because of how Apple decided to construct, to enforce this standard on everyone, we have ugly tagged music because of that. Because of just them. They couldn't use the tags that existed for a particular reason. It's like whoever wrote, I don't know, in all the development of iPods, they didn't think to like check that up. Like what do people use these standards for? You know what I mean? And they're the same way with email. They're the same way with texting. They, they have to do texting their own ways. They, they want to have liking that uses MS, uh, you know, uh, SMS protocol doing it things weird ways. They have to reformat emails. They have to do everything themselves. And the worst part is, the worst part is, if you have an Apple cultist who's living in this Apple environment 
this Apple co cocoon of fragile software that breaks the instant you use a real standard, they get mad at everyone else. Oh, you don't, you can't be a member of my Apple chat. Oh, you, you do things. Oh, these things are tagged. In. Why doesn't this work on Apple? This sucks. You suck. No, it's Apple that sucks. Like that is the easy. They do everything their own way, and they are big enough that they can just say screw you to everyone. And it, it's all. And now, of course, hardware like they they've screwed up everything. You don't even have audio jacks in phones anymore, thanks to Apple. Okay, in any phones, because everyone just imitates Apple crap. Because they're like, oh, Apple wants to get rid of these ports. I guess we better get rid of these ports, right? That's how people think. You know. It, 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 it's insane. And of course, what's the result? You have an entire generation of people who are beyond ignorant about technology because that is what Apple hardware and software is about. It's about keeping you stupid when it comes with technology, right? You don't want to have something that you can change. You can tinker with this a little bit. You want to have this, 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 this very fragile system that is just gives you this one homogenous user interface that does everything its own way. They can't use normal protocols to transfer music to, to an iPad or, or sync things up. They have to do everything their own way. And they do everything wrong. They do everything inefficiently. And then they force it on everyone else. They screw up everyone's standards. They make crappy hardware that is planned to be obsolete. You can't even take parts out of it without disassembling everything. And because they are so big and because they can rip people off with planned obsolescence, all these other companies have realized, oh, well, we better do the same thing. That's what consumers want. Consumers don't want to be able to plug things in. They want simplicity. They want to have like five lightning ports instead of, or whatever they're called for, for, or for Apple, instead of having actual ports, right? Um, it's just so stupid. It's, it's, oh, we don't need Ethernet anymore. We, we don't need audio oxes. We don't need any of this kind of stuff. Apple is like... Demonic. It truly is the worst company in the world. Um, and everything they touch just turns to, to, I don't know what it turns to, but it, it turns to something bad. Okay. It's awful. So yeah. I, I, so to the original comment, yes, I can understand being infuriated at Mac stuff because the more you use it, it's not just the, the angrier you get at it. It's like, the, you you feel bad for Mac users for having to put up with the stuff, but it's like they don't even realize that they're being abused. It's like in their mind again, it's like everyone else is wrong except for me. That's their way of thinking. It like I don't know. It, it's a cult. It's a cult. That's all it is. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Where did I put my... Oh, there it is. Um, Knurr sends in some XMR. Appreciate your content uh, here. Have some change. Thank you. Um, a Curious Mind sent in some XMR. Could you talk more about your experience with the Orthodox Church? You've said, in, um, said several times that you believe that they get things right, uh, where there are many... Uh, others today, where many, so many others today get things so wrong. Could you elaborate more specifically on what you mean by that and uh, what lessons you see as valuable today? Um, well, nah, I should probably do a separate video on this because I don't know, people ask me the same questions. Or I thought about doing a video on why specifically I, you know, didn't become a Catholic because a lot of people ask me about that. Um, I, I would say in general, like the elevator speech, like in generalities, what separates the Orthodox Church from the Western Church is um, the Western Church kind of, it, it does what we were talking about before that the Enlightenment does. It takes human reason and puts it, puts it too far ahead of everything, too far above of everything else. Like the, the Orthodox are content to have, uh, to, to receive mysteries uh, via tradition, the mystery of baptism, the mystery of... Uh, communion, all these these kind of things, and they don't want to intellectualize things, and they don't want to put the fingerprints of human reason on it, and create some systematic theology in the way that the scholastics and the Catholics and then the Protestants did. Okay, so what that means is that you know in the West, people will end up innovating. So you'll add on doctrine, you'll develop doctrine in the Newman 
sense of the word, which of course he meant it to be a good thing, right? Oh, as time goes on, the Catholic Church invents, they develop more doctrine. They basically discover it, okay? In like a, in like a Rothbardian uh, natural law sense, right? Uh, whereas that's not what the Orthodox, I mean, the Orthodoxy, the, the, the view of Orthodoxy is to cling to the traditions of the apostles, okay? And to keep, th keep things conservatively at that. So what is exactly the mechanisms of salvation, right? What exactly is a mechanism, you know, how does, uh, you know, how is the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ and all this kind of stuff? Like these, these are mysteries. These are things, these are unanswered questions. We can philosophize about them, but that is different from the objective of the church, right? And so what you get with the Catholic church is you have people intellectualizing, making all of these distinctions and all these kind of things that, that don't apply. Um, and Protestantism is this reaction against it, okay? Oh, here are these things about Catholic doctrine that are unsound. And instead of returning to orthodoxy, Protestantism is really just, I mean, it's a branch of Catholicism. They reject the Pope. They're not in communion with the Pope. Um, but instead, of, they see that, that issue and kind of, I don't know, diminish the value of tradition altogether because they say, oh, look, the Roman tradition is bad. So let's have this... Uh, you know, let's basically look at the Bible and interpret it without context, okay? They don't say they do that, but they do, okay? So that's why Protestantism is not even a thing. It's like a million different things, you know? Uh, but they're all based on the same idea, this this elevation of reason above, uh, above divine mysteries, right? Uh, and, of course, then above tradition, right? So now if you want to create a Protestant church, you read the Bible, you squint your eyes, you find what you want it to say or what you think it says and you create your own church. You know, that has no connection to the apostolic church. It's that, that's just how it is. Um, so, I mean, there are a lot, there are lots of issues. I'll, I'll just say on any individual issue, this principle applies. Okay. You know, where there's all this innovation in the West and, and, you know, the Orthodox church is just the Orthodox church. It's just what it is, you know? Um, so there, there are many other things about it that originally I was unfamiliar with when I first went to a, a physical Orthodox church. But, um, you know, th those are like cultural details, you know. Um, uh, Mr. Based42069 sends in some XMR. Aloha snack bar. Uh, why are you streaming so early? I should be working, but I'm here. Is remote work unironically based? Yeah, it is un unironically based. Um, yeah, I, d I was going to do a stream last night, but it was like too late and I had some things to work on. So I, I figured I'd do one now because I have some time now. There's no reason. I guess, wait, let's see what time it is everywhere. I actually have a script that make, uh, wait, oh, let's see. Okay. So it's a little past midnight in China. I guess it's a good time. Oh, uh, Europores and, uh, Pajits can probably watch right now. Um, yeah, no reason though. Yeah, remote work is unironically based. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I want to do a video on like a, the very concept of employment and why it's bad. <laughs> like, you know, we, a lot of people, one of the most common questions, I'm surprised I haven't gotten it in this live stream, is all these freaking kids asking me, how do I get a job? You know, oh, I'm in software development. How do I get a job? Like, am I a proponent of employment? Like th th how people think about things now is they think about like jobs as being this scarce, uh, 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 scarce commodity that they need to fight for or something like that. As if the nor like the idea of mass employment, the idea that no one works for themselves, everyone works for a company, that is very much a boomer thing. That like before then, I mean, especially when people were more agricultural, people were basically self-employed. I mean, of course, many people did subsistence farming and bartering and had simple crafts and stuff like that. Um, but it's much more common to have, I mean, you, you can look at self-employment stats and you will see like basically the norm in 1900 was self-employment. Okay. It, or, you know, maybe you have to go a little bef further before that. I'm not quite sure. Um, a lot of that would have been agricultural workers too. Um, but, you know, there, after the World War, right? Wagedom, wagedom becomes the norm. Oh, everyone has to just get a job, right? And now, of course, at least, at least you have the reprieve of having online work becoming more common. And yes, it is an improvement, uh, but the real solution is uh, self-employment or having a business or all of that kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, when people are coming to me like, oh, how do I get a job? Like, you, especially if you're you're in computers, if you're in technology. 
You should not be thinking about what kind of job am I going to get. That is the last thing on your mind. You like you have this literally magical ability to create new things. That do, I mean, this isn't like carpentry where you have to pay for wood. Like your raw material is, I don't know, clicks on a keyboard. They are free. You know what I mean? Like you can make ma You can literally perform digital magic. So the the idea that oh how can I I really just want to be a peg and knocked into a hole like no that's stupid like why do you want to get a job you shouldn't want to get a job is it okay to get a job in software of course it is it's fine to get a job in software but that should always be your side hustle like especially if you're in computers like if you get a job somewhere even if they're paying very well you should always think about that in terms of this is what I'm doing on my day job I'm actually working on these projects that is my view okay because you we we have by having digital technology, by having the internet, we have a very unique ability to be independent in a way that no one in the past has been able to do. Because this isn't an independence of like sweaty your brow, you know, subsistence farming, or even, you know, craftsmanship or things like that. Like this is a much more powerful kind of self-employment, right? Um, so, and I think people, that, that, if you are into computers, that should be your primary goal. Paying for your, you know, getting money, you know, I, I don't know what you're going to do in con, doing like uh, individual tasks for people, consulting, I don't know, affiliate links, like anything. Like there are so many ways of making money uh, via computers um, that it's just not, you shouldn't really be uh, drop shipping, things like that, right? I mean, you know, my book selling business, we're there, right there, right? LindyPress.net, right? I actually do more work for that because I actually typeset the books and stuff like that. But how easy is it to start a dropshipping business where you just sell stupid merch? Oh, I like Monero as a cryptocurrency. I'm going to start my own dropshipping site where I sell Monero stuff. Okay, you know how easy that is? There, you, you can probably do it with free software that's out there already and hook it up with some print-on-demand service and print that stuff. You know what I mean? What, I, what I'm getting at is we have you, you have so much ability to do, to do so much and you should not be focused on getting a job, right? So this is not actually an answer to this guy's question. It's an answer to the question that I get all the time anyway that actually gets at the deeper point. So um, dropshipping is scummy. Nah, well, I mean, yeah, there, there are many kinds of dropshipping that is scummy, right? I mean, you can, you can sell junk, but there is a sense in which even if you are just hooking up a print-on-demand service to a website, you are doing a, an important service. Like if you're writing that kind of stuff, like it's not a, like that, hey, that counts. Like that's a real thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It, it depends on what you're drop sh shipping, but you know, it can be done. Is crypto dead? No, you better be slurping the heckin' dipperino. Actually, I don't know. I, I slurped some dip a little bit ago. I might slurp some more dip, but I think I might fall a little more. I've talked to multiple people right now who are like thinking about buying whole bitcoins because it's so cheap right now. Um, Christian sends in five dollars. Luke, come to Romania, the country with the biggest biggest Orthodox church in the world. Let me know if you want to. I'll email you my details, and can arrange visits, uh, arrange visits in monasteries around the country. Okay, if you if you email my main email, I will write that down. Okay, if you're inviting me. And uh, I'll contact it. Now, there's a low chance that I'll be out there. But hypothetically, if it happens, I will put it in my, in my uh, Vim Wiki notes. Tux loves you. Sends him $5. Uh, thoughts on Ethan Ralph. I made a game about him at this URL at his site, tuxlovesme.me slash post slash gunt. Also, look forward to seeing you uh, on the Break the Rules podcast. Oh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was the podcast that I said that I was going to do. Um, Ethan Ralph, I know that he exists. I, I, I think he's like a streamer. I don't know. He's fat. That's what I know about him. I don't know. He, I think he interviews people. I, I don't know. I want to say like years ago, he may have emailed or someone from his team may have emailed me to do something. And I was like, I, I think I said yes. And I ended up not doing it. But um, I forget. Like there are, there are many people who ask me to do stuff and um, it just gets lost in the emails. Like one of us doesn't respond or something like that. That's a very normal thing. <laughs> the only time I regret that is when someone, like I've never done a product review on my channel um, and I'm not against him. 
Now, obviously, 99% of products are absolute trash, but occasionally I will have, you know, a manufacturer of like, um, uh, free note, like people who like Libra boot, uh, think pads or core boot them or something else, uh, or like do free phones or something like that. Every once in a while, I'll have someone like that say, Oh, I'll mail you a free sample if you review this. And, um, that's actually, you know, and I've kind of, Oh, maybe I'll do this, but, um, uh, I've never actually gotten a free computer out of it. I kind of, I kind of wish I had, I really want another core booted or Libra booted, uh, computer so I don't have to core boot this thing myself and you know I could probably use it for something else but um, um, so if, if anyone has a company where you do that tell me about that <laughs> um, uh, but yeah Robert uh, uh, sends him five dollars love you mr. Smith uh, you used to have a blog article called only mediocre minds Nit ugh, nitpick where did it go? Is one of my favorite. Yeah, I, I, someone asked me earlier on the stream about that. Yeah, I, that was, I was doing my website a different way. I think it's in a different folder, and I didn't transfer it over to the new one. I'm actually rewriting my whole website, um, in Hugo. Um, could you talk about nitpicking and what makes someone a nitpicker? Thank you. May our Lord bless you. So, <laughs> what a nitpicker is? Just someone who's, who, who's like detail oriented in a bad way. Like they want to. I, I don't know. Like, they can't come out... Uh, really, what I was getting at in that article is, like, people who miss the forest for the trees, you know, kind of stuff like that, who, like, miss the point of things, and then will, uh, will like, argue some autistic and unimportant detail um, as if it matters. Uh, I should bring back that article because it makes a good point. Um, based in Turkey Pilled, sends in $1. I noticed that everyone is sending in one dollar now. <laughs> I thought I used to have like a minimum donation on my Fospay thing. I, I used to think it was like three dollars, but whatever, you know. Um, uh, so one dollar. Uh, constructed language based novel art. Ugh. Is it a based in novel art form or cringe bugman hobby? It's definitely a cringe bugman hobby, or at least in ninety nine percent of the time. I mean. Like, yeah, it's, it's basically a cringe bug man hobby. I don't want to call Tolkien a cringe bug man. Like, his context is a little different. But, yeah, constructed language. Well, he was, like, the original guy to do that. Every other bu um, constructed language now is, like, literally retarded and just, like, a silly intellectual enterprise where you could just, like, actually learn a real language that's much, much more interesting and useful aside from that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Keon said, have you read uh, Father Fer Seraphim Rose's books yet? Do you know about Seraphim Bailey? Glad you are becoming Orthodox. Christ is risen. Truly, he's risen. Um, I have read bits and pieces of Seraphim Rose's stuff. I've read some of Gre uh, Genesis, Creation and Early Man. Um, maybe something else of his. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, I wouldn't say I've read his books in the sense that I've, like, you know, have a, 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 a wide and, uh, you know deep reading of him or anything. Uh, I don't know uh, anything about Father Seraphim Bailey. may have heard of him, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, as you can tell, I'm kind of getting tired. I might uh, I might just re recline in my chair. See, I can't say, oh, I'm, go oh, I'm going to bed soon, because I'm obviously not, but uh, um, I might make up some other... Well, I do need to eat lunch eventually. Annie sends in $5. Hi! Do you have any thoughts on the Roman... To do a, an episode of Not Related on this. Okay, this is not on the Roman Empire. This is like... Well, it's related enough. Okay. So, uh, I meant to do an episode of Not Related on this. I probably eventually will. But a couple months ago, or maybe last year at this point, on UNS, like UNS.com, the, the news aggregator, they had this guy posting like this chronological revisionist... Um, the, the, the series of chronological revisionist articles and what they argued, like they argued for like, uh, what is it? I, I want to say Gunnar Heinsohn's revised chronology and his view. So his, um, crazy view is that the Roman empire, like the, what the classical age, but also the later Roman empire around the time of Diocletian and also the Carolinian empire in Northern Europe, or at least, you know, Europe, Central Europe, 
they actually all occurred at the same period. <laughs> and, like, they all happened at the same time. And, in fact, a lot of the histories we have written of classical Rome are actually the same as histories of, you know, Rome in the, the post-classical era, the, the early Byzantine period, you know. Uh, and, of course, the Carolinian Empire. Like, all of this was the same cultural sphere, the same empire. Um, just, like, different cultures and dis different historians writing, right? Now, the argument is actually, like, very empirical in the sense that it is reliant on, um, like, stratigraphy. So, because there's no, bi like, these three eras, like, this the so-called classical era, the post-antiquity era, and then um, early Middle Ages... In stratigraphy, those are all the same. Like, there's no difference. Like, there's no archaeological site that has one and then the other and then the other. Like, you know, what and how we think of things, like, his way of putting it is, like, you know, we have, um, you know, that, that period, in his view, is, like, basically 300 years. And we have that 300 years, you know, we, we look at the classical era where the, the I guess, the spotlight is on one region where is it's a dark age and everywhere else and then we look at the byzantine era or like the byzantine area uh and then everything else is in a dark age and then we look look to care the you know carolinian you know charlemagne's empire and then everything else is in a dark age there right so his idea is basically it's all the same thing and then in the gregorian reform around the year 1000 which really is around the year 300 uh in the revised chronology um, they kind of rewrote things. They kind of like systematized history and wrote all this stuff as if it were a sequence and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, that is the first thing that, <laughs> that's the first interesting idea that came up with the Roman empire, um, to my head. So th that's, that's what I'll leave you with there. Um, so yeah, I, I should put the links to those somewhere. If someone has the links, put them in the, the, uh, video description or not video description, the, the chans, the, the the uh, channel uh, chat um, okay so yeah that, as for uh, if I have, actually have to pick a favorite emperor who do I want to pick I don't know who do I want to pick I don't know I don't want to be boring and say Constantine but that might have to be it how about Constantine the 12th the emperor that will eventually reclaim the throne and reinstate the empire. That's my favorite emperor. Um, now, I think I did do that video. Yeah, I did some video talking about, like, Dante's view of the Roman Empire. Um, what was it? It, oh, it was the one that was, like, who's in the deepest pits of hell? That was the title of it. Um, but uh, it talks about Dante's, like, theological view of the Roman Empire. Where, you know, the Roman Empire exists for... You know, because when Christ was crucified, he had to be crucified in a universal jurisdiction and all this kind of stuff. You know, there's interesting theory. You can check out that video of mine. Again, it's um, who's in the deepest pits of hell or something like that. Okay, Matt donates one dollar and one cent. Oh wow, we're getting we're getting up to one cent. Yeah, I need to I need to put it back to. Uh, having the minimum at like three dollars or five dollars, whatever it is, because realistically, I, mean, yeah, I don't want to be too greedy. But a, I get a whole lot more comments than I can read through, and b, uh, they're still uh, Stripe's processing fee is like I think three percent plus thirty cents. So you know whatever, well, Monero is preferred. That's what I'm saying. Damn one dollar donations, I got you, man. I'm very new to using Linux and love it. Currently running Ubuntu and working on uh, using my keyboard less and less every day. Practicing using Vim, would you recommend switching to an Arch-based distro at this point? Uh, what would you recommend focusing on to increase my skills as fast as possible? Uh, you know what? If you're trying to increase your skills as fast as possible, switch to Arch. Or switch to Artix. You know, I use Artix. And make sure to use... Uh, install one without a desktop environment at the beginning. And if you want to increase your skills... Figure out how to install all of that. You know, it, it's not difficult. It might take a day or two. Uh, if you have an extra machine, that may maybe makes it easier. But that would be that would be the next uh, the next jump. Like that was the big jump for me when I was like, okay, now I understand how all this works, right? So that's my recommendation. Tom donates a dollar. Thanks for streaming for us Europeans. What's your opinion on James Burnham, in particular? His quoted from. Um, his book, what is it, The Machiavellians? 
I've never read the managerial revolution. In fact, I, I probably heard people talk about it. I don't know enough about it to pontificate about it, so I won't. But yeah, I might take a note of that and, you know, get it next time it pops up. I'm actually trying to, like, buy fewer books. I have way, way more books than I can store. I mean, all my shelves here, they're, like, totally full, uh, as you can see. And over here, this shelf is full as well. And then I have, like, boxes of stuff outside. Oh, look at my white, look at my chalkboard that looks like schizo uh, marks all over it. So I was practicing, I was practicing, um, uh, you know how, okay. There are people who can, like, make lines on a chalkboard that are, that, like, are dashed. Okay, it's, you gotta practice it to do it. I, I kind of mastered it, I think. Let me see. Ah, kind of got it. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, you have to hold it in a certain way, and uh, if you do it with just the right amount of pressure, it will uh, make a dashed line. It'll just kind of skirt across the board. You just have to hold it like really, well, you don't really want to hold it tight. I don't know. It's hard to explain. If you try it, you'll figure it out. So that's, that's why I have all those marks on the boards. But yeah, I actually have way too many books now. That's what I was talking about. I have books on the floor. Uh, my shed is like full of boxes of books, you know. <laughs> I need I need to like downsize on books probably. I need a there are actually some books I should burn. <laughs> Eric sends in some uh, Monero. Hey, consider asking for a cozy TV channel. Not Foss, but it's Christian first and basically no terms of service. Uh, don't read aloud. I will also read this. Okay, I will. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I I thought about it like. To be honest, like, I kind of don't want to have to ha worry about another platform. <laughs> I mean, it's hard enough. The, the, the annoying thing, what I'd really like to do, and I've talked about th this before, is stream to PeerTube and to YouTube at the same time. But there's actually an issue with PeerTube, um, or, like, some module they use uh, is it doesn't interface right with, like, the Nginx restream crap. Like, so that's why I only stream on YouTube now. But ideally, I'd like to be able to stream to multiple platforms. But I will just say, like... A lot of people have asked me to go on to Cozy TV. Um, I'm just a little reticent just until I can stream to all these places at once. It's just like an extra thing that I got to worry about. You know, that that's my that's my view of it. I don't know. Maybe they would accept. I will note that. I might um, uh, follow up on that. So, Flare Donuts, $5. I appreciate your take uh, on Orange Boomer. One last donation. As I mentioned before, I'm a neophyte in respect. Uh, respectively disagree with you on the Catholic Church, you should check out Spexo. He's basically, uh, he's based and strongly Catholic, hard to find online. Even if he doesn't convince you um, on the one true church, it might at least expand your take on Catholicism, bless you. Yeah, I mean, like I considered Catholicism for a couple years um, before Orthodoxy. Uh, I was pretty serious about it. Um, but yeah, they're just like, I don't know. It's it's just kind of a shoddy foundation. That that's all I can say. Um, uh, like I don't. I mean, it's not it's not as bad as like being most kinds of Protestants, but um, Adarsh sends in three dollars. Do you think it is better to learn Latin or ancient Greek in university if my time is limited? I know university is cringe, but I'm here, so dot dot dot. Um, second, well, actually, I'll read the first one. Uh, or I'll answer the first one first. Uh, you, you should learn both. Like, everyone should learn both. I mean, um, I, I think... I mean, the, the long-standing tradition of learning Latin first and then Greek works. Like, for everyone in Western Europe or knows a Western European language, that is the ideal. Because you learn grammar, like how Indo-European grammar works when you learn Latin. And then Greek has some extra difficulties. Oh, it, it's written in a different script. Oh, it has you know, words that are more alien, okay? But it's easier to do that once you already know Latin because Latin grammar and Greek grammar are nearly identical, right? So you learn the concepts when you're doing Latin and it's much easier because Latin, like vocabulary in Latin is not a big problem because basically every Latin word has some English word it's related to and you can like at least use this as a mnemonic device. Um, so I think you should definitely take both. I, I think, like, I know people who know Latin and not Greek, or Greek and not Latin, but it's like it's like being naked. I don't know. It's 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 like a kind of nudity. I I feel like it's wrong. 
um, just to be like that in public. You should really know both. <laughs> um, so maybe, you know, if you can only take one class, maybe start learning Latin by yourself now and then take a Greek class. Maybe you can do with that. Uh, second, the second question, he says, before you've uh, expressed distrust in physics... As a physics student, I have to say I don't really believe in astrophysics, but relativity and quantum mechanics are very solid. I'm at uni to learn the subject, not for my career, uh, so I don't think it's a waste uh, for me any thoughts. Uh, I, I've never said I distrust physics. I mean, I do have an article on my website that people, re I don't know, causes consternation every once in a while. It's called Physics is Fragile, okay? And I'm not actually talking about physics in that article. I'm more making a point about epistemology right so i talk about like astrophysics like if you have some relativity like so the thing with relativity is people mean two different things when they talk about relativity there's the idea of like relativity in like a doppler shift writ large which i have absolutely no problem with and you know a lot of people say oh relativity quote unquote has been proven because oh we need gps's and all you know relativity for that and that kind of stuff but that's all basically doppler shift stuff Okay, there's the, what, a lot of times when people say relativity, they really mean time dilation, okay? Um, like, Einsteinian relativity is usually conflated with time dilation. Now, time dilation, I think, is very much one of those things in physics that can be questioned. Um, relativity itself, relativity in the sense that, you know, again, like, the Doppler shift writ large, that's basically undeniable. That, I mean, that's not, that's not even like a proof. That's something that has to be true by definition, right? If it takes time for uh, information or light to reach a place, then you have to take that into account, you know, from other vantage points. Duh. Um, but, you know, time dilation, as in, you know, as you get closer to the speed of light, time dilates, right? That, I think, is something separate. And I think you can argue two things. Now, I will not say, I'm not saying that I don't believe in time dilation, but I will say this. You could probably say two things. One is the original mind experiments uh, for time dilation, you know, like the twin hypothesis and all this kind of stuff, are basically understood backwards. Okay, a lot of times. A lot of times, like, or even Einstein. I, I think Einstein was even asked about the twin uh you know the the twin uh paradox or whatever and he was he vacillated on, on as to whether you know that actually has anything to do with time dilation you know what i mean or if, if it's even a good paradox so one is i think you could definitely question the logic of that okay and i'm not going to do it here because i don't maybe i'll do a separate video on that but like uh, i'll i'll just say you can question the logic on the original um thinking behind time dilation and secondly the empirical observations of time dilation Okay, so where you have, oh, well, if we shoot this particle, it degrades, you know, uh, at this rate, whereas, you know, these kind of differences, right? Um, yeah, so those are empirical observations, but I think if in the light of the kind of stuff that I said in that article on my website, those are highly rarefied observations that you could ha theoretically have any number of theories to explain, right? It could be something related separate to speed or something else. Like it doesn't have to be specifically that time changes if you're moving at a different rate, okay? From some, you know, stationary observer or something like that, right? Um, and so there are a lot of people, I think, who have questioned time dilation and have done it pretty legitimately. Now, I don't stick my neck out on it because although I, I kind of understand the arguments, I don't, like I'm not totally sold on it being nonsensical. But I will just say, a lot of the times people will say, oh, relativity works, but they're not talking about time dilation. They're talking about, they're talking about the Doppler shift or the Doppler effect or whatever. That, was I saying shift? I mean, I guess you could, you could use it both for both cases or whatever. Um, so, I mean, really, I, I think there is a case to be made that time dilation is not a coherent uh, concept. Um, but, uh, you know, I, whatever. Uh, quantum mechanics, um, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily dis... There are some things in quantum mechanics, like some interpretations of quantum mechanics that are obviously stupid, um, but, you know, I have nothing against... I, I think the, the, the observations of it are something that you need a, a theory of, um, but that's not to give my endorsement to anything, because I don't, I don't really think about quantum mechanics that much, so... Okay, uh, my internet is going slow. Or at least on this computer. All right.
DJ says, have you um, recently found any cool programs that you haven't covered in a video? Uh, by the way, uh, well, as to that question, I rarely, I, I basically have not added any programs to my repertoire in years. Okay, that's why I don't do, you know, a lot of people, you know, are still like, dude, you should do more heckin' Linux videos. And I, I've never, like, when I started doing vid videos on Linux programs, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna switch anytime soon. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm probably gonna turn on, probably gonna turn on a light because I feel like... I closed the windows because I was overexposed, like the, the light here was overexposed, but now I kind of feel like I need some light. Uh, but I don't trust the natural light this time of day. Okay, well that doesn't look too bad. Um, and his second question is, by the way, do the services under the other donation methods section of your donation page also notify you of a donation me method message, specifically PayPal? Uh, if they send me an email, I'll probably get it. Uh, which I think I, a second ago, I think I did get a PayPal message. Um, somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's one. Um, yeah, one dollar from IFO. He says, what's your take on risk? Uh, risk V, is it risk V or risk? I almost want to say risk five. <laughs> so I don't know that much about them then. I don't know. I've only seen it written. Um, they keep pushing them as open hardware, but it's just the architecture. I can't find a single RISC V uh, uh, micro MCU uh, with um, its design files open. I don't know enough about it to, to tell you. I don't know if there is. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about the openness about anything about them. So I I look. I want to look into stuff like that just to optimize some things at my house, but. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's against my principles. Maybe it's too, I don't know. I should be more anti-technology than that. But I really just don't want to spend the money, you know. Uh, okay. Um, Farson F says, Luca, do data analysis for clients on Fiverr and Upwork. I'd prefer to be a platform independent. Uh, pl I'd prefer to be platform independent with my own website. But what steps could I take to get traffic to my website? I'm not a YouTube celebrity. Well, um, you know, I'm not a big fan. So I regret, I don't want to say regrets. That's the wrong thing to do. I would say if I could go back in time and redo my YouTube channel, um, I would probably be anonymous. And that's not for like privacy reasons or anything like that. It's more like, um, I don't know how good it is to have a, 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 a personality and an ego in front of people. I don't like... Um, I don't like, you know, the, the, I don't know, people on the internet, they have a tendency to become very cultish, right? And I don't, I've never liked that, okay? So I, I might sound kind of dismissive with people, but I don't. However, I will say it is probably a good asset. I, I think you should probably start some kind of social media thing. Um, just, just, to, I mean, you know, if you want to do YouTube videos on just random stuff, um, mind you, I, I wasn't born a YouTuber. I just started randomly doing videos on things. And... I think it's a good idea, uh, although I'm against, like, platform, you know, I don't think that normal people should be uh, staying up on these big platforms. There are reasons that you might want to think about making a social media profile on YouTube or, like, Twitter or something like that, uh, just to get a, a following independent of your specific clients. So I think that is, um, you know, something you, you want to consider. I mean, I've leveraged that. I mean, there have been a couple ways. Like, you know, I got my advertisement for my book site over there, okay, right? Some of my traffic, obviously, is going to come from my YouTube channel. So, in fact, probably most of it, right? So, oh man, I'm hiccuping now. Um, so, I would not... I would contemplate putting your feelers out there. Maybe creating a, a kind of social media thing. Maybe just putting up videos of what you do on YouTube. or in, Could be instructionals. Could be, like, things for clients. It doesn't matter. Just putting stuff out there, and maybe you'll get 20 subscribers, maybe you'll get a million, maybe you'll get zero, okay? Um, but that's just something to think about. Um, but, uh, yeah, in terms of getting traffic, that is the difficult thing, because you basically have to start with social media and move from there. So, um, unless you want to, let me think. I don't know, I really do need to do a web ring thing for people. Uh, GitHub is another thing, like open source stuff. And then, I don't know, yeah, that's a good idea too. Um, oops, didn't mean to press that. John von Neumann, 
uh, sent in some Monero. Uh, you don't understand relativity. GPS works because the speed of light is irrelevant in all res reference frames, not because of the do Doppler shift. G satellite is going toward or away from you, but the speed of light is the same. Uh, as soon as you have in, as soon as you have invariant speed of light, uh, time dilation is mathematical ne mathematically necessary. Okay. Wait, GPS works because of the speed of light is invariant and all. Oh, okay. No, I know what you mean. But um, that's not. Uh, I mean, what I was talking about is like when people divide, like people will make arguments for relativity from you know Doppler effects. That that's that's what I'm getting at. And either way, like, let's see, how. In, in light terms, how big is the Earth? Like, how, how long does it take for light to reach the other side of the Earth anyway? Let's see. Because I don't... Uh, I was under the impression that the Earth is close enough to not have to factor in any time dilation. So I don't know if uh, someone else wants to say, who's actually a physicist wants to say something on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, how, how far is it to the sun? Like how many, is it like, for some reason I want to say it's like eight light minutes to the sun, but I might be wrong on that. I might be like way off. Um, Mm -hmm. I can't find it. I'm not going to look for it while I have other stuff to read. Um, so, uh, Anonymous sends in some Monero. Walking barefoot in nature, based or cringe? Uh, well, I do it all the time. Yeah, you should be walking barefoot. I don't know why you wouldn't. Hold on, I'm looking at the chat. People are saying eight light minutes. Yeah, about eight. What about the Earth? So, like, if you if you dug through the Earth, how big would that be? Or really, like the or, so like the the dis, Let's say the distance a satellite uses. So, how much? How many light seconds or light milliseconds would that be? Like how I, I'm like desperately awaiting an answer in this chat. Of course, like there's like a 20 second delay. Um, yeah, so yeah, be barefoot. Um, Sam Smith sends in some Monero. Does it pain you that the Orthodox Church doesn't use Latin? I'm conflicted because I like the idea of carrying on the 10,000 year uh, institution, but also most of our institutions we've inherited seem to have degraded. Uh, build new institutions or save though. I mean, well, there are Orthodox churches that you, know, you can go to a Western Rite Orthodox church and they do do service, uh, services in Latin, but um, they pretty much always had the idea of doing things in, uh, you know, vernacular languages. There's not, like in the West, there's a big divide between Latin and its descendant languages and, you know, you use Latin for, you know, that kind of stuff, but it's not, uh, you know. Uh, Earth's diameter is point zero. Four, two, five light seconds. Alleg allegedly, that's actually a lot bigger than I thought it'd be. So, yeah, if that that is the case, you would have to factor in time dilation, uh, I assume. Um, but of course, you have to factor in you know normal, uh, you know, just movement again, like Doppler effects. Anyway, that's uh, nearly certainly a bigger effect. But. Um, Forty milliseconds through the Earth. All right. Anyway. Uh. So Sam's. Oh, I just read that. Yeah. Another way, like the use of certain languages in liturgy, is not. Uh, 
like I don't know that that's kind of I don't want to say it's a personal preference, but it's like a cultural specific thing. If, if you're if you're focusing on, on that, like it's not uh, I don't know that that's I mean the church is not supposed to just look like the church. That is not the goal. <laughs> like you know, it's not it's not the goal to I mean the the continuity across time is supposed to be theological and liturgical it's not supposed to be like in superficial things because you know language changes right um and if and at the time when latin was used in the west in comparison to vernacular languages it was it was used because it was a commonality uh it was like a uniting factor now like no one speaks latin i mean just not, you know, the division between, like, Latin and vernacular languages is too great. And, of course, people aren't taught that stuff anyway, so they don't even learn it. But. Alright, looking at the chats. Luke, are you checking YouTube Super Chats? No, I usually don't unless I just happen to look at them. Um, have you have you read any of Marshall McLuhan's book? I've never heard of that person. Why have you stopped shilling for Brave and went back to Firefox? I mean, I've literally never shilled for Brave. Oh uh, boy, that was like one of the worst force memes ever like the thing is <clears throat> i want to say i started using brave like in 2019 and people asked me to do videos on it for like literally a year because they would see me using it and then i did a video on it and people were like oh you're shilling brave there's like money involved so you're like you're sh oh you can get paid to use it oh you're a shill and then you know once i got up a good firefox configuration i switched back and now people are like oh he's shilling Worst, worst cringe thing ever. Well, I did, I did write an article on my website about like wh how bizarre. Like, there really is like an ant. There, well, there isn't anymore because no one cares. But there was a period where I never understood that one. But I actually still have Brave installed with Larbs because um, it's kind of hard to deploy. I, I need to look up. I well, I've looked into doing this. It's kind of annoying to do it the way I, don't, I want. I want to be able to deploy Firefox. With a bunch of add-ins, add-ons, like extensions, you know, it comes with an ad blocker, all this kind of stuff. So if you install LARBs, it automatically installs all that as well. Because I, I like, I don't want people installing my dot file, like nor more normie tier people installing my dot files and then opening up a browser whose default search engine is freaking Google and, um, you know, has, um, uh, I don't know, like no ad blocker, right? So that's why I, ha I still have Brave installed with LARBs because it's I like I don't have like it it actually it, it is the one normie friendly browser that actually has sensible settings when it's installed. You like there is no absolutely no reason ever to view an ad on any site. So there's no reason that every browser should not have an ad blocker by default. Okay? But Brave is like the only browser that has done this. So that that puts it, in terms of installing on normie computers, that puts it above the rest. Even if they keep adding stupid widgets to it. Uh, like that, that is the, that's the thing I kept getting sick of. But eventually I just bit the bullet and configured Firefox and hardened it and used Arkenfox and some other settings. But if I can get that working with, um, you know, uh, LARBs to deploy it automatically, I, I'll probably have it installed. All right, well, I haven't gotten a donation in several minutes, so I, uh, I can finally take a break. Uh, Libra Wolf comes with uBlock by default. I mean, all of those... No, I mean, I'm not interested in using Firefox clones because, um, I mean, they, they there's no reason to... I mean, the, the thing that annoys me about Libra Wolf is that they will go like 90% of the way there and then they'll still have stupid default settings that are bad. 
I mean, if if they're installing like ad blockers, that's great, you know. Um, but you know, I I want to be able to. Uh, I actually did a video, or no, not a video. I did an article on my website on like things that a, every browser should have, but none of them do. I, I forget what it, it's like. Why there is no good, no passable browser or something like that. But um, they all have screwed up stuff with them. Um, I, I've tried to fire the Firefox clones, but the thing with Firefox clones is if you're just using normal Firefox with like Arkenfox JS and like easily easy enough to install settings, like just with a, a user, you know, dot JS file. Um, I mean, you, it's just as easy as setting up LibreFox and fixing it, you know. Uh, let's see what else. Will you upload the Patreon videos on your other platforms? Um, I guess those are still there. Do I still... Is my Patreon still up? I don't even know. If there is, I want to say my Patreon is still up because every month I'll get, like, a message from them saying, you just received $30 from Patreon or something, like, you know. Because I don't... I don't. I used that thing for, like, two months, basically. And I was like, wow, this is stupid. Because the very concept of, like, paywalling videos is kind of dumb. Now, I did put up videos there, but it's like... I don't want to say they're personal videos, but they were more like, I don't know, bl bloggy videos. I don't I don't think there's any reason to put them up. I mean, they're not like secret, um, but they're also like, I don't really, I don't think it'd be interesting enough to put them up. Because it's like from a period of my life that was a while ago. I still kind of mean on doing um, a video on like paying for... Um, you know, how to, how to budget buying a house, basically. Uh, my thinking in doing that, how I bought it. Because, you know, I, I don't I do not do any of this mortgage crap. I don't believe in that stuff. I mean, some people, some people because they have the, a mortgage, they think they own their house. I'm not a big proponent of that. Like, if you, if you own a house by owing a bank $100,000, I do not consider that owning. But, you know, that's fine. Um... Let's see. Um, what's your take on MGTOW? The same take I always have when people ask me about it. Um, anonymous sent in Monero. Have you looked into Christian Reconstructionism? Writers like Peter Lightheart, James Jordan, uh, R.J. Rushduni. Cornelius Van Til. I've heard of some of those. What is what is that? Reconstructionalism. I've never heard of that word though. What is is it like Protestants trying to recreate the early church when they could just like actually jo join the real Orthodox Church? <laughs> I I don't know. I I've heard of Lightheart in James Jordan. I don't know the other. Or no, Van Til. Van Til is like the presupposition. I don't know. These these are all like Protestant people. I, I'm not. I I never got into that. Or well, I did. When I was, when I was, well, never mind. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in that. Yeah, when I was in West Virginia, I, I want to say the, the pastor, or the pastor, I guess he is the pastor, but the priest, um, was talking about, you know, there, there was some, or maybe it was in another parish, but there was some, like, group of Protestants that were like, oh, we got to recreate, like, the early church, and we got to look at, do research and, like, find how they actually did stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually they realize, oh wait, that still exists. It's called the Orthodox Church. And then they just convert. As a as a as a group, they all convert to the Orthodoxy. Many such cases. The Orthodox Church doesn't count because it's influenced by Greek philosophy. I mean, the influence of Greek philosophy is much larger on the Western Church than the Eastern Church, which is, re I mean, that that is not even controversial. Like, I mean, the the Western Church like lives and breathes 
Aristotelianism. Like that that's what it is. Like that's that's what Aquinas was. It was all like scholasticism was just like this giant Aristotelian, you know, movement. Um I mean, some people will say that like the Eastern Church is more akin to Plato, but you will not hear about Plato in I don't know, it's just not it's not important in the way that like Aristotelianism or, or Greek philosophy is for the Western Church. Where Camel says, can I get a Lindy Press bought a Lindy Press bought book PDF? I mean, if you want the texts of the of the books, they're like li most of them are public domain. Like you can go out and get them. I mean, the 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 point of the PDF is for printing. <laughs> uh, that that's the P in PDF. But no, I mean, I I don't like. Um, I thought I no, I don't think I do. I, I don't think I did. I don't think I think I canceled that. But um, yeah. I mean, I I think I'll eventually like put up this like the LaTeX source for some of the books. But you can compile it yourself. But no, I don't like sell PD. The uh, selling a digital project or product feels absolutely fake. Um, the goal of the business is to reprint you know books or whatever. Um, and if you want the texts and you don't want to buy the books, they're literally like free on the internet. Uh, Efi sends in five dollars. You know, I really, I need to ban all questions that start start with thoughts on blank. Red pill me on blank. You know, I don't know, whatever. Thoughts on Islam? No, I don't really have any thoughts on Islam right now. Um, Adar says donate one dollar. Some more on relativity. It's not super long. You can read it. Okay, he just gave me a paste bin of something. I don't know what he's trying to tell me. Oh, okay, so he just has a longer uh, comment that he wrote. Time dilation and link contraction are two sides of the same coin. The magnetic field is actually the electrical field plus special relativity. The existence of magnetism can only be explained through this theory, and it is well confirmed. No need to rely on shady astro-doppler effects. There are good mathematical and experimental explanations of these effects. One can show that there must be a maximum speed without the notion of light. Using the principle of equivalence in the idea that any direction you look in is no better than any other. Okay. See, Maram. Okay, let me read that again. The first sentence again. Time dilation and link contraction are two sides of the same coin. So, yeah. Okay. Time dilation and link. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I'll look into that article. You can say, see, Merriman, uh, 2000, or 1985, Relativity Without Light. You know. I'll look into that. Um, but, uh, so then how do you, no, I'm not going to ask you that. I'll read that first and I'll ask on the next live stream. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask a question on the next live stream. Um, have you read Gabriel Garcia Marquez, a hundred years of solitude? No, I haven't. Luke, did you ever read the structured atom model? It's the missing link to your relativity debunking. No, I've never heard of that. Structured atom model? Have I heard of that? Oh, sweetie, that's been debunked. Try to keep up. <laughs> What's structured atom model? Let me think about that. Let me think about what he said about time dilation and length contraction are 
same thing. Hmm. I gotta think about that. Yeah, I don't want to think about that in front of a hundred people. I'll do it on my own time. Um. <clears throat> Philip sends in five dollars. Uh, how do or did you make the money for the land? Uh, I'm a 21-year-old Balkan boy studying in Denmark, thinking to get a job here to save up for a few years and then buy land back at home where it's cheap. Cheers, Luke. So, I mean, I, I think I said in, in uh, a video a bit ago that, like, I my property I bought for, like, $85,000. So that was before, like, land prices went up a good bit. I mean, may, you could probably buy it for twice as much now. But, um, you know, I... It was, I'm a an extreme saver, I guess. That's a easy. Like I never, I never really tried to save money. Okay, but I'm just one of those people. All everything I earn is I'm not going to spend it. You know what I mean? Unless it's like on a necessity. Unless it's like food. Like the biggest splurge I do in spending is like I don't know. Go out to eat with people. Maybe, maybe once a week. Maybe. Um. So, like, I don't spend that money money on that much. And I in, during graduate school, it's not like I was making that much money. But I just, you know, was saving enough that when I thought about moving to the country, I basically had enough for a, a massive down payment, you know? Like, I could have got, gotten a mortgage. But I ended up working something out where I did, like, a rent-to-own agreement where I would, um, you know, basically every month I would give this guy rent and it would go to the price of the house. And then at the end, I agreed to pay the rest of it, um, just in a big lump sum. So, I mean, that's how I did it. Rent to own things. Like, if, if you can trust the guy you're doing it with and you trust the property and you intend to actually have it, they're probably a good idea. Um, so, I, in result is, you know, I have a house without ever having debt. And it costs, again, $85,000 is pr pretty cheap. Um, and don't... don't uh, you know, expect to get a, a price that good given the market now. Maybe after a year or so, if the market collapses, you can get something for like that. Maybe some good foreclosures. You might be able to get some stuff even cheaper. But um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, like if you're saving like $20,000 a year, that adds up really fast. Okay. Just, I mean, well, really more than that. I mean, if you're, I think I in that video before, I mean, it, where I was talking about it, if you're saving like thirty thousand dollars a year, it's it's easy to, you know, have a house paid off, you know, by the by the end of your thirty, by the end of the time you're thirty or something like that, you know, you can end up with a house paid off, um, and at that point, your ba like your your view on life is going to be very different once you have that settled, like once you have your living expenses settled, uh, you're kind of like oh like I. I mean, I, I need a job, but I don't need a job. You know what I mean? Like, I just pay for the things that I buy, which can be significantly lower. Um, and everything else is, like, saving for the kids, uh, like, you know, inheritance. Uh, which I, I think it's very important to, to leave your children lots of inheritance. Uh, that's basically the goal. Like, because, you know, um, one thing that the boomer economy has kind of tried to destroy is the idea that... I mean, people no longer aspire to leave things to their children. They don't want to don't want to have generational wealth. It's like that's like a bad thing to have for many people. That's like, oh, you want your kids to be bratty rich kids? No, I want my kids to like have have land that they can use. You know, I I want that ability ability to be there, even if they are doing something else like that. That's basically basically a requirement. So, um. Zach here, uh, I think he told me how to pronounce his name once. Maybe it was Zach I-R, it's a, a last name. But either way, he sends in uh, $5. Do you believe in the rapture and tribulation at the end? No, no only, only extremely weird Protestants believe in like rapture. That is something made up. It was something made up like 150 years ago by this guy named John Darby. Like it is no, 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 that is not a thing. The rapture is not a real thing. Um... I remember you saying that the book of Revelations was a reference to the time of Nero. I mean, yeah, so the, the interpretation of the Orthodox Church and really like most sensible Protestants and most sensible Catholics of the book of Revelation is, yes, the, the, the book of Revelation refers to the time that it was written. It refers to Nero and all the stuff going on with Rome. 
but also you should interpret it as if it, I mean, it has an idealistic interpretation where we should still be on guard for repetitions of it in the future. Okay, and also the Orthodox do believe that there will be a Antichrist, you know, one one big one at the end of time or whatever. Not end of time, that's maybe the wrong way to put it, but um, either way, this rapture, tribulation stuff, that is like Protestant fan fiction. It's like left behind stuff, you know, that, that's, not, that's not a real thing. Um, Silish uh, says, you seem to believe that science is about discovering truth, not creating models of the world. Yeah, well, yes, that's because it is. But how do you reconcile that with the idea that the theoretical framework of a scientist works in will, works, that the theoretical framework of science works in will influence his theories, even when there may be other valid theoretical scientific frameworks. If there is an element of arbitrariness in theoretical frameworks, and how can scientific discoveries ever discover truth per se? I mean, I, I don't see how that is a problem at all. I'm very confused. I mean, it's like, I mean, there are some domains where you just have like totally different scientific frameworks and they can still, I mean, in, in linguistics is a good example. Maybe I've, I've written about this in some, uh, well, linguistics, usually I will complain about it. I'll complain about generative linguistics. But in the academic discipline of linguistics in the United States right now, it is actually multipolar. Like there are totally different frameworks all looking at same problems and they have their own theoretically and theory internal ways of solving them. Okay. So what do you get out of that? Okay. How are you getting closer to the truth? Well, truth is not like, truth is not, I mean, your issue is you're thinking about science as being about models. It isn't. You know, truth is about discuss like getting incrementally closer to the actual model that is the universe, the actual occurrences of what we're, we're we have a series of models that are ever getting closer to reality. Okay, that actually has a structure to it that we have to discover, right? And at the same time, the the, the what theoretical frameworks give us is that eventually now theoretical frameworks if they're just masturbation if they're just like rewording things in some new way they are useless okay absolutely useless and that's that's my main complaint about generative linguistics as an aside um what matters is a phenomenology okay what happens is you have different theoretical frameworks and due to the way that they may look at particular issues they might clue you in to different relationships between data points that you did not notice before. And what survives after those theoretical frameworks is the acknowledgement of those data relations. You don't need a theory to interpret that. But, I mean, let's say... I don't know. I mean... Uh, I don't know. Let's give an example. Hypothetically, there have been people who have said that there are some human cultures where people do not understand that sex, sex creates children, okay? They don't understand that relationship. They, they just know children, they come out sometimes and, oh, well, there's also sex, but it's a different thing. Most human cultures understand that relationship, but allegedly there have been several that don't have that relationship, right? Now, suppose some culture discovers that that is the case. They, they have, maybe they have some kind of experimental structure. They, they realize something. They have some certain, like, theoretical framework for looking at what semen is or like, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be anything related to how we scientifically look at like, uh, you know, gametes and, and stuff like that. It, it doesn't have to have anything to do with that. It could be just in terms of like, oh, they view things as spiritual energies. It doesn't matter. Once you notice that sex causes children, right, that is a data generalization that you can have different interpretations of. You can have different scientific reasons for why it happens or different theories of how it happens. But once you've noticed that data relation, you, you are now closer to understanding reality, okay? So that is not a theory internal reason. Suppose this, this tribe has this idea, oh yes, well, sex seems to cause, cause um, you know, children, but maybe it's because of, I don't know, like pubic hair rubbing together. Uh, who knows? Like, it doesn't matter. The, what I'm getting at is once you understand the phenomenology, the actual relationship between data, once you've realized new things, you have now learned things, you have now gotten closer to truth. 
making models to rewrite things that we already know, that is useless. That is not, I mean, it's not even, I mean, it's just a waste. It's a waste. Unless it will lead you to even more data that you can bring into your theory. Or really, if it clues you into stuff that you didn't realize beforehand. Okay, so the the problem with again I mentioned generative linguistics and it's a good it's a good example of positivistic science. I don't know anything about the history of linguistic thought? Um, and so what they end up doing is they end up taking given data that everyone already knows and then making some formalism to describe the data we already know. And whenever they are confronted with new information, they don't. I mean, they they just kind of have a way of like integrating that into the theory. And they don't really have a way of like, uh, they don't actually find new stuff. And if they do, it's by accident. And if they do, they can't actually accommodate it. But they like ignore, or they ignore it because their framework is not fit to, to, to deal with it. And that is most of positivistic science, okay? So it's, it's, let me start with some priors of how things have to work. And then I will fit things into my model, except for the things that can't fit into my model. You know, I, I will like you know, change the degrees of the, you know, I will change the little variables in the model and tinker it a little bit, but you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to step too far away from that. Like a, there's no, Oh, I, I can't like, uh, change my general framework because that would be pseudoscience or something like that. I don't know. They, they just have, they have a very silly way of looking at things. And I think, you know, my theory of science is the same theory of science. Basically everyone throughout all history, including all normies have. You know, this whole models are the goal of science is this insane and incoherent view that only makes sense in institutionalized positivistic science within the 20th century. And it only, I mean, it's basically just a way to get like grant proposals approved, you know, for people you like. That's about it. Like it, it, it doesn't function as a scientific theory. Uh, McKinsey says, I know you hate giving advice, but in spite of, <laughs> I, know you, I don't hate giving advice. I hate giving the same advice over and over again to the same people. Um, I know you hate giving life advice, but in spite of that, do you have any advice for a first year of economics undergrad going into their second year? Well, well, if you have something to do, uh, I mean, school to me is like kind of a last I don't know, last on the list if you don't have anything. Um, so like, I don't think there's anything wrong in persisting in it so long as you're not going deep into debt. And again, like the, the benefit of um, a degree is, is fine. Like you're not, don't expect to learn anything in school, right? My one regret in my undergrad is that I did not skip more classes. Um, but yeah, don't expect to get anything out of it. But if you can do it cheaply and get out of it unscathed and unbrainwashed and undestroyed, that's probably fine. And you can leverage a degree to get you job. Like having an undergraduate degree it is, I mean, as some people say, it is almost required just to have some kinds of jobs, right? So it's not the end of it. Um, I would just uh, make sure if you're going to stay in st school, make sure it is as stress-free as possible. Take your classes based on what is like less, I don't know, easiest for you, basically. You know, don't take, there are all these classes now that make you want to do all these, I don't know, they want you to do all this work all the time. They want you to have clickers. They want you to do all this stuff. Like the first week of classes, you should always be going into every class you could theoretically take and say, oh, which one involves the least amount of work? Which class can I skip the most often? You know, that, that is my mind, that is my actual how you should view, if you are at all an intelligent person, that is how you should look, be looking at things. And, or even if you're not an intelligent person. If you're not an intelligent person, like, you're probably not gonna, I mean, going to, sitting in class is probably not gonna make a big difference. So that, that is what I would say, and if you're interested in economics, you, you will learn about it on your own time, if you, if you care about it, okay? Um... Yeah, and someone said if you if you actually if you're you actually are a girl, because I think you, her name was Miss McKenzie. You should yeah you should think about getting married. <laughs> someone said that. <laughs> People do ask. I have thought about doing like a video on like girl advice, because a lot of girls will watch my channel, 
And they will think that everything automatically transfers over to the life of girls, which is absolutely not the case. Like, girls, like, you really should, like, if you have this magical out of getting married, like, if you can get married to a guy who's, like, further along in life than you, which is what uh, women, like, want to do anyway. They just get, like, kind of brainwashed out of it because, oh, you no, you got to get a degree so you can make PowerPoints for corporate America. Now, most girls, like, if given the choice, they would jump at that opportunity. And that is what most of them should do. Like, if you're, if you're, uh, I mean... Uh, Okay, uh, I think the stream pooped out for a second. I'm not quite sure. No, it's going. Uh, okay, I haven't gotten donations in a minute. So I will look at the chat. I'm desperately trying to get my girlfriend to not become a teacher. We don't plan on having kids due to genetic issues, and she does like teaching and kids, but it's an awful system. I mean, there are, there are places where you can she can teach that aren't going to be awful. I mean, if you're in a city, yeah, sure, that's going to be awful. But and I said before, there are public schools out there that are okay. Okay, you you got to go out of the city. There are there are places out there that are fine, um, and there are private schools. You know. Okay. Um, uh, Strat. It's it's so hard to read these names because I just have. I really should have like a name uh, thing on my donation portal that people can put a name because I just like read their G, their emails and they're just a million names put together. Anyway, this guy donates five dollars. My name's Eva. Oh, he says it in the he says it in the comments. I should have just read that first. Hey, Luke. Uh, do you know about Project Xanadu and other hypertext projects? Learned about it recently and found it interesting. No, I've never heard of that. Is that like, is that something like Gemini or something? I don't, I don't know. Hypertext? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Some, some HTTP equivalent. Adar says, to understand what I said about relativity in my donation, a better resource than the article is the book. It's About Time by David Merriman. Okay. You can libgen it. I'll go ahead and libgen that because I'm not reading donations. Uh, it... I never heard of him. Uh, I read some, like, physicist crap, but um, let's see. Here it is. I mean, it might be that uh, all the people who have explained uh, relativity to me are mentally retarded because I've never... I, I never heard that way of looking at it, but I will... Um, I'll, uh, I'll read this and see if I understood you right. Because it makes sense in my brain. I just want to make sure if that is... Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Um... Oh, got one. Jim says, what do you think of crypto mining? I think it's a good way of generating passive income without being dependent on any form of employer. Well, it's just an issue of how much can you generate? Like, I don't know. Um, I, I've never mined. I I have some friends who have mined. I mean, well, actually, when I was in West Virginia, the priest there, he, he mined Ethereum. And he said there was a period where he was making a huge amount of money from it, like, couple hundred bucks a day or something I forget it's not making as much now but um, yeah I uh, 
I don't know, like, if, if you can do it, if it's profitable. I, I know at least Monero, I mean, the only, the only cryptos I care about are Bitcoin and Monero, realistically speaking. Uh, and I don't think, Bitcoin, of course, is kind of out of my league to, you know, I don't have the material to, to mine it. And I don't think, I mean, Monero mining, anyone can do it because you can just use your normal computer with an Intel processor. But um, I don't think it's very profitable. Unessential nature. Uh, sorry to divert the topic. I mean, we've been diverting topics all the time. But I just wanted to say how much my perspective on the job market as a whole changed thanks to you. I unfortunately had to endure a year and a half of working for an Alzheimer patient's hospital, which was entirely set up as a scheme to launder donations from the government. Best part is that it's fully legal according to our own government. Well, that's that's pretty screwed up if that's true. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I don't know, a lot of stuff's just kind of sad to even think about. Um, I mean, it was, it's one thing in, in um, I mean, at least you can say in if they're taking care of people, like someone's got to do it, right? Maybe maybe it is they are scamming the government for a bunch of money or whatever, but at least they're doing something. There are a lot of charities out there. I, I trust zero charities, absolutely zero charities. I cannot think of a single one that I trust or I would give money to. Um, actually, yeah, I, well, I was, that would be some doxing information. I was going to say there's one that I would trust, but... Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, let me think of ones. I, I cannot... Are there any good charities? There are just... Like, it's just how the system works now. I mean, like, charities are primarily... Like, when you understand what they actually uh, do, okay? Like, how, how they... Like, the benefits of having a charity, you will understand why they're so rife with corruption. Because here's what you do. There's a good video. I, I, there's a good video that someone showed me months ago. Um, that you can look up on your own time. It's like on YouTube, you can pull up, there's a guy who does like a tax firm where it's like how to pay no taxes on cryptocurrency. Okay. So it's like, it, it's a, he talks about CRTs, charitable remainder trusts. You, if you search like CRT, Bitcoin or something, it'll probably come up. Well, it's actually interesting on your own time, but he, he tells you basically how you can have this charity more or less donate money kind of to yourself and get it back in an annuity to avoid paying capital gains tax. And now that that's cool. Like that that's cool. I'm like I'm not against it. I, I mean, I'm against all taxation. That's fantastic. But the thing you have to remember is when you have rich people, if you have like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or all these like big uh, NGOs, the reason they exist is for money laundering and tax avoidance. Because what Bill Gates does, well, I, I actually you can watch this video for money that you're not paying capital gains gains on. And eventually the charity gets the money, but you can also get an insurance policy on it, like a life insurance, extremely expensive life insurance on it. Um, so you end up getting your money anyway, right? So that's, um, you know, it, it's just the, anyway, that, so that's cool for individual use. But when you think about it, most charities actually function like this. It's for rich people to have, you know, this way of, uh, uh, like avoiding taxation and stuff like that. And, and like, so all this stuff about, oh, he's a philanthropist. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just silly. It's just silly because it, it's self-serving. You can use this kind of stuff for um, um, uh, just your own benefit. And, the, and people use normal charities the same way. Uh, one dollar. Uh, my name is Thought Crime. What kind of desktop computer specs would you recommend for getting for someone who wants a base Linux machine but can't perform, but can perform well with mug games, Windows? Also, what are your thoughts on ketamine? Ever try? No, of course I'm not tried ketamine. What am I freaking retarded? Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't care about game. I don't. I don't know. Just get a computer. I don't care about gaming. I don't know what year of games you're playing. I have no idea. Like the last games I ever played on a computer. Um, were made back in, you know, 2012 or something like that. So I have no idea. I don't care. I don't know. My eyes glaze over whenever I hear about graphics cards and all this kind of stuff. I just could not care less. Um, I recommend just getting a, a low resources computer so you don't have to, you know, and just not playing games, you know. 
Zach sends in five dollars. Uh, why do so many modern Christian women also believe in astrology and the like? I've never actually met even a a, Christ, a girl who pretends to be Christian who is not a Christian say that she believes in astrology. I, I have not seen that. That's kind of like a new agey. I don't know. It is. It is like there are many of those girls that are like faux spiritual, but I feel like the ones who pretend to be Christians are different from the. My internet is kind of poopy right now. Oh yeah, totally out. Totally out. Are we back? Okay. I think we're back. Um. Torless says the ultimate working machine is an old ThinkPad with two gigabytes of RAM so you can work in the terminal without being able to fire up a browser and get distracted. Don't thank me. It's actually good advice. When I, when I had my uh, ThinkPad X200, that was kind of how... I mean, it, it could run a browser fine. Um, but if you did too many things, it would get a little... <laughs> I mean, the thing about any kind of processing, like processing power for normal use, there's just no need for anything, any fancy processors nowadays. You know, for just no, doing normal stuff. The only reason that crap exists is... Well, it's really twofold. One is, like, playing games. And two is... Um, like, if browsers and stuff that run in them are so bloated and so terrible that, you know, you need all this processing power to do all this JavaScript. Alright. Well, guys, my nose is starting to itch. So, it's about time for me to... About time for me to in this stream. So if you have any last uh, donations, go ahead and send them in, because I've been going for way too long. I didn't mean to be going this long. I wanted to, like, stop, like, maybe a little afternoon, but now it's, like, it's 1.30 here. <laughs> so last donations, get them in. I'm actually extremely hungry. I usually only eat once a day. I might eat twice today, though. All right. Uh, should le you leave your red pill? Okay. I and I actually thought about mentioning that in my last video. Where it's like, oh, living in the country versus living, uh, you know, in uh, the city. The real red pill. If you're in your younger twenties before you're married, just live with your parents. That is the actual. And, and it's it's more. I mean, in every freaking sane country in the world, people do that too. Everywhere. It's set for the United States, where there's this, like, bizarre consumerist idea. Oh, I'm 19. Oh, I have to, oh, I have to spend $1,000 a month, like, on a house for no reason and, like, rebuy all the stuff my parents have. Oh, I gotta be able to, like, you know, have, like, a, a living room to myself for some reason. Wow, this is really important. Wow, all the cool kids, you know, say that I won't be able to coom if I don't have my own apartment. Wow, yeah. Living at your parents is absolutely based uh if you're mid-20s lower 20s and unmarried actually even if you're married there are good good reasons to live with your parents too um you know if you're starting off you're saving money stuff like that so yeah this whole this whole nuclear family only thing you know when, when it's just like mom and dad and the the kids that is very boomer okay you you got to be able to live with grandparents live with older unmarried children absolutely i endorse that of course, I say that, I'll probably be eating those words eventually. I'm like, when are my kids getting out of my house? I just want to consume product and, you know, whatever. I probably won't actually say that. I, I will stick to that. Um, thanks for validating my lifestyle, Luke. Yes, great. It's great that you're saving money. You better have a job, though. Like, <laughs> I, I don't endorse just living at your parents' house. You, you have to be, like, stacking, stacking sats, so to speak. David says, um, almost all charities are garbage, even the ones that are ostensibly well-intentioned. However, 
I like the approach to charity evaluation present at org- organizations like GiveWell, which requires certain standards of financial transparency uh, and demonstrated cost effectiveness before recommend- recommending. This allows one to find the needles in a haystack that are actually doing good work. I mean, the, well, the other thing is, I mean, even that, frankly, once you get to a bureaucratic level, okay, it's like charities do not, I don't know, charities just naturally become corrupt. That That's 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 my view. I've never seen a charity, and I, I know people, I know people who, who deal with charities, and it is almost like impossible to, like you're sitting on all this money, and you can do what you want with it. Okay, so all you have to do is find some flimsy justification to give it to people you want or, you know, do tit for tat. Like, it is so easy, you know. And it's not like there's a a rigid line between things that are bad and things that are good, you know. Uh, The unessential nature says, again, uh, you do not know true pain until you have been in a workplace where 90% of management are women. Uh, I've experienced pain like that. I haven't had ninety percent. I've had a high percentage though. There, I, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, most of my time in universities, um, not everything. Like there were lots of things that were run by women, um, but you know, we didn't have a separate managerial class. It was just like inept, you know, professors or something like that. There were good. I mean, uh, there were good female professors. Actually, when I did my masters, my major professor and uh, she was a female. And there was also someone else on my committee who was a female. Okay, and they were, they were fine. At least my major professor was. I mean, the, the other the other woman I just had just because I needed some extra. There were not very many people in that department. Um, but yeah, things got the more bureaucratic. It is the more the worse it is. I mean, it, like, yeah. I mean, everyone just needs oversight all the time, especially women. Like women, I don't know, don't don't function well in bureaucracy. Or maybe that's the thing. Maybe they do function well in bureaucracy. That's the problem. They enjoy it too much. Okay. Men like have this like sense of revolt and just like disgust at bureaucracy. Just like, oh wow, we're sitting in another meeting where we're talking about literally nothing for no reason for 30 minutes, which is really just like a thinly veiled excuse to like humble brag and like complain about things that don't matter and stuff like that. Yeah. Men don't like that. But that is that is the direction that bureaucracy gravitates. So, low T men like that. I will say that if you're low T, if you're you know, yeah, three hour stream. I know. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I will just say one p- more passing remarks. I'm getting like physically tired of sitting here and sitting in my chair and just talking out loud. So it's been like three hours. But um, uh, I was gonna say one thing that I, I wish I thought was gonna happen when you had the lockdown hoax. I thought people were just gonna be like, oh, let's abandon the formality of having stupid meetings since we have to do them remotely. Let's abandon the formality of all these silly jobs and, like, let's trim the system of fat and let's, like, you know, get rid of a bunch of bureaucracy. And it all happened. I mean, maybe it happened in a couple businesses, but, like, things are back and bloated. You know, it's nothing. It's like people learn nothing, you know. So... No, it's red again. It's red again. All right, I'm probably going to turn this off. So the CPU, I was using... Oh, my goodness. I can't say goodbye while the thing is red and not actually transferring data. Look at this packet loss. Crazy. There it is. Okay, it's coming back. It's coming back. Um, so, oh, I already read that one. So, yeah, I will probably sign off now. Um, uh, I will, let's see, there are a couple of videos I want to do more like uh, me talking outside videos. Um, so, oh, one thing that pisses me, you might ask, oh, Luke, why haven't you been doing like as many, uh, screencasts? YouTube screwed something up and this has been going on for a couple months. I'll complain about this. Uh, this is going to be on my, my last complaining thing. Um, but this is a big one actually. Um, uh, and I, the crazy thing is I haven't found anyone. I, I think YouTube has cursed my channel. 
because I haven't found anyone else this happens to. But recently, um, every screencast I record on my computer, and you know, I can I can um, uh, then uh, let's say re-encode it in something else or. Uh, put it in a different container, doesn't matter what it is. Whenever I record a screencast on my computer, I upload it, I use different browsers, it's not a browser problem either, I upload it to YouTube, and then YouTube will have this weird error where it will play the 15 seconds, it will upload the whole thing, it will play 15 seconds, and then all the colors go gray in the video. And this has been going on for months. This is one of the reasons I've been doing less videos, and I've tried to figure out, out what it is. like. I thought, you know, I assumed it was my fault at the beginning. I assumed, oh, well, maybe FFmpeg is screwed up. Uh, maybe I'll use a different version of it. Or I'll encode in a different container. Or, or you know, uh, uh, you know, use a different encoding or use a different uh, container. Um, and the only thing that works is if I upload them to PeerTube first and download them from my PeerTube and then re-upload them to YouTube. Which is weird because I will, like, re-encode them in different ways and it still won't work. It's, it's crazy. So... Uh, I don't know what's going on. That's why I've been kind of disincentivized to, to do more uh, uh, live streams. Or not live streams. Um, screencasts. But uh, there is right now a video on Shadow Chat. Shadow Chat is the thing that I use for Monero donations. That is on PeerTube. I will probably upload that to YouTube um, once I get that figured out. And then um, I, I have some other videos I want to do. But um, uh, Oh yeah, I might be going to Linux Fest this year. Uh, Linux Fest Southeast in... Charlotte, North Carolina, you can look that up. Um, you can look up Southeast Linux Fest, and it'll be there if you want to go. So there's a chance that I will be there. So I got to... If you have any ideas of what you want me to present on, you can give me some suggestions, because I need to figure that out, out like, today. All right. Um, let's see if I'm not leaving any donation out. Cause I don't know. No donation left behind. Okay, great. I got them all. All right, I'm signing off now. Signing off. <laughs>